Sunday morning before the sun comes up. 12 anglers out there getting ready to go. 12 anglers who can see their opening, who can imagine a scenario by which they might win this one. We try to sell these tournaments in a lot of ways. We always say, hey, it could be anybody's. It could be a free for all. This time we might be serious because think about the place where we are, legendary Toledo Bend. You're watching the Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend, being brought to you live by PowerPole. Bassmaster Live, good morning to you. That was the scene right before takeoff this morning. Cypress Bend Park near Manny, Louisiana. A nice, uh, pretty stiff looking breeze snapping those flags out there. They got the flags of all the nations that have ruled over this part of, of Northwest Louisiana, East Texas, and 12 anglers, as we say, getting ready to go. Got some Western anglers sprinkled in there. Brandon Polinick, John Murray in there, Tommy Sanders. Davey Height with you here, Davey, and uh, I don't know, do you agree? Do you think it, all of the top 12 have got a shot? I truly believe that. Sometimes we talk about that, like you say, but don't really think it could happen, but today it could definitely happen. And the first thing that I noticed when we came on live there is look at those flags. Ooh. It is gonna change a lot of things. Here we go, something really cool I see there, and I know without even looking up Casey Ashley's rod. You <laughs> see the jigs, you got several jigs. He, he's been catching some really big fish in the afternoon. And then this guy, Jason Christie, when he's in the hunt, you always have to look out for him for sure because he is a guy that can close the deal. Absolutely. Four wins for Jason Christie. Of course, a former Bassmaster Classic champion, Casey Ashley. Let's take a look at our Humminbird Lay of the Lake. Of course, everyone can't wait to get to Toledo Bend. It's the dream of every serious angler in the country to get to this 185,000 acres of water on the Sabine River making up the border between Northwest Louisiana and East Texas. This is a, a, a unique, one-of-a-kind place, Dave. It, it really is. I think all of the elite anglers enjoy coming to Toledo Bend because it's so big and so much diversity. But there's one guy that not many people picked to win at this event, although he had a great event in his first elite tournament at Cherokee Lake. Jamie Hartman has, has withstood all the, the guys running after him, coming after him with all they could do. So you got to give him credit. John Murray, Jason Christie, Casey Ashley, you got guys there that have won lots of tournaments, won on the biggest stages, and Jamie Hartman's really done well. Yeah, he's faced him down all week long and retained his lead to start this day. Uh, first look at Brandon Pollock. I hope we get a first look at him early on this morning. We haven't had him in a good while in our in our Five Live, but those are a wrap of Five Live on our Humminbird Lay of the Lake on Toledo Bend. Again, not at all like Conroe. You can't be checking spots up and down every end of the lake. You're, you're kind of locked into a place, maybe two places during the course of the day that are fairly close together. This is a travel. Travel is an issue here in Toledo Bend. Especially when the wind blows. It's such a big lake. Obviously can't fish one end to the other in an eight hour day and catch anything, I don't think. But when that wind blows, even if you're, you've chosen to fish north or south, not only will it make the fishing tough once you get there, but to go up north, like I think a couple of these guys are fishing, it could take you two hours. And then you don't know how much time to allow to come back to weigh in, which is another thing that you don't want to have to worry about. Take a look at our leaderboard after the weigh-in on day number three, and there he is from the Syracuse area, Lake Oneida guy, Jamie Hartman, a rookie in his 40s out here with the Bassmaster Elite Series, and he has certainly made his mark again, making it close at Cherokee Lake at our very first one up there, and doing it here, getting it done, staying on top. It's very, very tough, and Jamie Hartman, the angler from New York, says, you know, I may be an unlikely angler to lead this tournament, and I might agree with you on that. Took everything he owns, his home, sold it all, put it in a storage unit to come hammer bass. And that's exactly what he is doing. Dude, I don't even know what I'm doing out there. I'm just going to town. I'm just, I'm fishing by the seat of my pants. And, and <laughs> I mean, it, it was crazy. Like this morning, I, I missed my first five bites. And, and I was like, dude, you got to settle down. Like, and then I, I, I made this one cast. Four times, three times in a row, I missed this fish. Fourth time in 15 feet of water. Fourth time I threw in there, don't six five. Like it's just crazy what's going on, you know. I rolled down the shoreline. I'm not bed fishing at all. I said, 
hey, let me go try bed fishing. So I go in, I pick a three pounder, I move 50 yards down the, the bank a little bit, and there's two good ones sitting on a bed. Also, when the third one strolls in, I get two out of the three. I mean, this is awesome. This place is awesome. Well, 23 pounds and a half on day number one. That wasn't the biggest weight on day number one, but that's something that's uh, been very important element, important dimension in his, uh, his leading spot right here. And, you know, Davey, uh, we got a lot to say about this guy, a lot to learn about this guy. Yeah. We might talk, uh, think going first back down to Cypress Bend Park, our, our uh, Triton on the line, and Dave Mercer. Well, why don't you fill us in on some, some little-known facts about our leader for all of us who are not f uh, familiar with Jamie Hartman? Well, uh, Jamie Hartman, you know, the last guy to show up at the dock this morning, and uh, and when he showed up, it was a much different dock than we've seen. I'm sure you guys have talked about it, but this is by far the strongest wind these anglers have competed in in this event. Obviously, we have heard a lot about um, in pre-fish, you know, how the wind was blasting, but much, much stronger here today. Uh, really, I mean, the, the weatherman said it was going to be four miles an hour, but uh, this is definitely not four miles an hour, and they're saying it's going to get up to 12 miles an hour so if this is four miles an hour it could get really really scary out there and Jamie Hartman as you said uh, you know little known rookie to a lot of people uh, on the national level but up north man I have been getting texts all week from people saying, wow, this guy is a hammer up there when we get up in smallmouth country, but he is a hammer right across the country and it truly is a dream come true story to be in this position. But the question is, is today his dream or is today his nightmare? When you look at things, I mean, an old business adage is, you know, the best time to grow your business is when times are tough. Times are going to be tough for a lot of our anglers. It's going to change out there. If you come into an event like this, I got to believe with the lead that Jamie Hartman has on Championship Sunday, you want things to stay as close to the same as they have been. And today it is much different. So it's going to be very interesting to see if it's a day where Jamie Hartman can close the deal on this thing or if it is the perfect storm for one of our 11 guys to chase him down. I mean, we have have seen some comebacks lately. Yeah, we, we have. I, I can remember one the last time we uh, we teed it up down at Lake Conroe. Dave, as we watched John Murray at his first stop out there doing his first work of the day. You, you know, a lot of people have said, not a, not a lot of people, but a couple of people you trust say, hey, this tournament might belong to a guy who's curious, who's not locked into one thing, a guy who keeps finding, trying to discover more and more each day. And, I, and from what Jamie Hartman said at the way in there, said he fits that, that description. He's somebody who's, who's taking a look, trying to keep everything honest. Might that play into his hands today, Dave? Uh, definitely. Like, like you said, Jamie Hartman at the weigh-in said he had never sight fished and caught several fish doing that yesterday. He's flying by the seat of his pants, and most of our top 12 is, really. This tournament, very different than many we've covered in the past, where generally you get to Championship Sunday, the top six are locked into what they're doing. These guys seem very open. John Murray's going to be an interesting one to watch, because we all know how lethal of an angler John Murray is and what he's done in the West Coast. And he's already won on Toledo Bend. His first Bassmaster win came from here but all week he's kind of teased it with us and said I'm doing something that is a big fish technique it's a west coast big fish deal he said it, it specifically targets big fish that's what he's been telling us all week and he said yesterday's weight really is not different than what he's been seeing most of the week the difference is he boated every single one of them yesterday so John Murray could be one you want to watch all day obviously with the biggest bag of day number three Dave, I got a question for you. Certainly John Murray is, is somebody we better watch today. When I talked to him last night, he seemed very confident. But Jamie Hartman, I was at the Cherokee event with you, and he seemed very, very poised to be his first elite tournament. But when I talked to him last night, the first words out of his mouth, I'm worried about it. Did he seem like that this morning? No, no, he did not, Davey. Actually, I, and I really spent a bit of time with him just to kind of gauge him um, because you can tell a lot in the morning. I mean, it's not what they say on the mic. It's kind of the face you see when they're, you know, getting their tackle ready and really calm. And there, there was a bit of panic right at takeoff. Um, as you can see, you know, it doesn't seem like that bad, you know, on camera, but a little bit of, of water rolling in here and where our boats were beached, all the boats had to back up. And obviously, as you know, when wind's coming that way, water coming over the back deck so there was a bit of a you know a fire drill going on at takeoff and 
that he wasn't rattled or anything. Um, he has waited 17 years to be in this position. He said he's dreamed uh, of this. He said, uh, I've been trying to get here for 17 years. And he said, uh, I, I mean, outwardly, he looks incredibly calm. Um, and I, I, it's just shocking that he's been able to get in this position because you hear people talk about having tough pre-fishes. And he literally told me, you know, off stage, he said, man, my, my pre-fish was really horrible. When he left the dock yesterday, I said to him, I pulled him off aside. It wasn't in front of people or anything. I said, how do you feel? And he said to me, he said, you know, I, I really, there's part of me that feels like I'm going to go catch him today. But there is part of me that would not be shocked at all if this all kind of fizzled out. Seems a little bit more confident this morning, but uh, I mean, I guess time will tell. All right, Dave, thank you so much. We'll be checking with you often, often today during the course of this final day with 12 anglers out there. And uh, we're taking a look right now at uh, well, what we've been looking at all week long. This uh, incredible playing field that offers so many opportunities and so many challenges this week to all these guys. Moving off of John Murray at his first stop right here over to Idaho's Brandon Polony. Sure. Sure, I'm glad to see this, oh. Tommy. For, for several reasons, you know, we, we struggle with coverage at Toledo Bend, but I talked to, to Brandon last night and he said he had a really, really good day. This, yesterday was the first day that he had fished this area, but he said it's, it's been really, really good to him for several years. But he went in here the first morning of practice and just caught little fish and he said it's kind of traditionally that kind of spot. But yesterday, he rolled in there and, and caught big ones and saw other big fish blowing up. So hope we get to see some of that this morning. Day two was his uh, his slowest day, 13 pounds and 11 ounces. A strong 17-1 yesterday for Brandon Paul and it got him into the top five. Gosh, I'm blowing up. <clears throat> yeah, Randy Howe first on the board, the two pounder. Good one. Oh, that's not that big. He might keep. That was bigger than that when he blew up. number one in the box. Not a giant, but he will get us started. Right. You might have caught that fish yesterday. He already had a little hole right there. You see that when I hooked that fish, it was like two or three more blew up in there with it. Could be a sign of good things to come. Could be a little school of them right there in that little grass patch. Get out of that grass. Oh, it feels a little bigger. A little bit. Oh, not much. Back to back. I don't know, keep for sure. Oh, yeah. Number two, back to back cast. The live wasn't even finished filling up yet.
There's more in there still, too. I see him moving. Three in a row. <laughs> yep. That'll work. <laughs> That'll work. Three in a row. Sweet. See if we can't get us a limit <laughs> without picking the poles up. Gosh, they might be on fire this morning, man. They're blowing up everywhere. Just need those bigger ones to start biting. One row. It'll be close. It's four casts in a row, though. It's four in a row. I like the way it's going this morning so far. No big bites yet, but but they are chomping and I, they're still moving around in there. Oh, one bit at it. <laughs> Calm down a little bit. <laughs> Getting all fired up. That's a limit. Number five. I just gotta remember to cold today and not make the same mistake we did yesterday when we start catching big ones. All the big ones come right down there. The nice part is, it's the last day. We don't have to lay off of them. <laughs> oh, he boiled on it. Just didn't get it all the way. <coughs> I don't know how many are sitting in that grass patch right now. Ooh, that was a good roll. They're blowing up over there. I think he might help a little. Let me get under this one. Thanks. Okay. You are red. Red. Oh, red. Red's bigger than that one. So it was an upgrade. That's good.
blocks that are green black. Blue, blue looks small right now. First cold of the day. I don't know how long that took, but it didn't take very long. <laughs> Just leave that beam out there. It's a good morning. It's a good start. Glad you showed up, Garrett. For the folks just tuning in, this is Brandon Polnick putting on a clinic this morning. Doesn't get any better than this, I'm sure. I think sure. he set a new record for us. Yeah. Make magic happen, Garrick. just need those four and six pounders to start eating like they did yesterday. I've seen it in this spot before where I caught them like this, but they were all five to seven pounds. Ooh. <laughs> Lucky sucker. That might have been my fault. Oh man, I missed it again. I haven't waited that time. They are just like rolling, blowing up in there. You're live. Oh, that one will help, I think. Here we go. You say live, we'll give you a fish. That one should help. Pretty much clones. Let's say green is actually a little bit here. Thanks, buddy. I don't even know why I'm wasting my time cooling with those. We can't win with them and they're blowing up in there. I shouldn't even worry about it until they're three pounders. I don't know how many we've caught without picking the poles up. And they're still blowing up everywhere. I'm gonna cast over here just for a change of scenery. Tommy, this is the, not the exact same creek, but last year in this event, we were here a little later, I had the exact same scenario. My son, it was a little later, his first week, Mm -hmm. out of college, came down here to Toledo Bend, had some friends, took him out 
I told them the creek I was going to start in. And I do have witnesses. In about, <laughs> Not questioning you. In about 30 casts, I caught 20. Oh. It was a, where a creek came out just like this, the first point with some grass on it, and they were this exact size. And you, you've got to love this. You've got to love this. But did you notice what Brandon Pollock just said? I don't know why I'm even doing this. You can't win with these. Yeah. At the end of that day, you know what I weighed in? Carp daddy spawn. That amount. That right there. Holy I spent cow. my whole day. But the, the cool thing, he said he's caught some big ones in here. But I spent two-thirds of my day having fun catching a lot of fish. You come to the scales with 11 pounds of tilly to bend, not so fun. And you get caught up in this. And, but like I said, yesterday he caught some big fish. Absolutely. But I caught some big fish in that area last year in practice. And you can't help yourself, but where he is coming in this tournament, those fish won't help him. Makes him feel good. Gives you a little confidence you got five in the live well, but it is Sunday. That was fun to watch, and this is a good Sunday to not sleep in if you're, yeah. if you're one of our Bassmaster Live fans right there. Look at the TH Marine forecast for today. High of 74, low of 62. It's a little bit uh, cooler forecast than we had yesterday. We were maybe up in the mid-80s said yesterday, and, but now look at the wind, and we're protected. We're, in a, we're on, the, on the east side here, a little bit protected from that southwest wind really jumping up there with the weren't expecting anything like that yesterday so our th marine uh weather watch is pretty meaningful today and it could change the game for some of these guys davy if those flags were straight out like like i saw on that 12 mile an hour it's already above that this morning it's gonna it's gonna make this lake fish very differently looked like it was exact same direction southwest wind and, yep yep but just a lot more of it's gonna pile up it. those waves for those guys especially but don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm having fun watching this, too. Oh, I mean, it, How are you going to beat that? It doesn't get any better than that, this. That's a record for us on Bassmaster Live to go from an empty, empty live well to, to culling in about 12 minutes is about as good as it gets. And when I talked to Brandon last night, he said that he checked this creek that's been so good to him in the past, the first day of practice, and only caught little ones. That's why he hadn't gone back until yesterday and then caught bigger ones. So it'd be very interesting to see if he gets a few big bites in here. For a lake with allegedly, allegedly no grass, the, the grass is coming up big time yeah, this morning. It is. He has on mine just kind of stay. Just kind of stay out here. I'm gonna work just down toward that log and come back. We have a fan online that says he just put his laundry in the washing machine and pollen it caught his limit before the rinse cycle kicked in. <laughs> Those weren't all four pounders this morning. Could have got interesting real quick. I actually caught my bigger fish yesterday, kind of mid morning, and that sun got above the trees. It really concentrated them around the little shade pockets. Oh, I don't know if that was a bass. If that was... I want to help, he choked it. Brandon had a little miscue They're yesterday. Everywhere in here today. And I see how you could easily do that. He caught a big one. He had five in the live well. And in all this fun and all this action, just like you're seeing here this morning, 
And he caught a big one and he put it, he said, I keep my five culling tags on one side so I know when I use all five, I've got five. And, and in the excitement, he caught his biggest fish of the day and just opened the left side, which you saw, Jacob, we were doing. We kind of, a lot of us have a big side and a little side yep. deal. And before he thought about putting a cull ring in it, he put it on the left side and went back fishing. And that's a, that's that's a penalty. penalty. He immediately called Trip, told him what he'd done. Good Unbelievable one. stuff to start our morning with. Brandon Polinick looking to win his fifth Bassmaster Elite Series event. Stops in his first little spot right there, and like he says, they're yeah. everywhere. They're rolling all over the place. He uh, <laughs> found a bird's nest on Three the ground, the old folks used to say. He really did. It's where this creek comes into the back of this, this cove, and it's torn of grass, and it's just loaded with fish, and Brandon Polinick sure did us a favor this morning and put on a clinic. That's a limit. One after the other after the other. You just hope that there'll be a few big ones mixed in there with, with these smaller ones. But it's fun, and, and we talked all week about how much it means to put that, those five fish in the live well in the morning. Well, you talked about your experiences with catching the, catching the numbers early and not being able to upgrade. We saw that with uh, Jacob Wheeler as well. So who knows what's in store for us today, but I can't wait to see what's next. The Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend is brought to you by Berkeley, Hook, Humminbird, Mercury, Minn Kota, and by Nitro Boats. Facts matter. All monofilament is not the same. Berkeley is the strongest, smoothest, most dependable monofilament line in the world. Why would you risk your fishing trip to a line that's made who knows where just to save a buck? Berkeley has been making and perfecting trialing in America for over 75 years. I spool nothing less than the best that's Berkeley trialing, and that is a fact. <laughs> Champions aren't born, they're created. Every turn of the prop, every mile on the lake, every cast of the rod, every fish they catch, and every pound they weigh. It builds who they are. It builds a legacy. Hey, thanks, Dave. Out of office? Oh, man. Hi, this is Skeet. Skeet. Out of office? Dude, don't be mad because I thought of it. What? I gotta go. I got someone to the line. Go to teamgtfishing.com to check out my real job. We're supposed to be working. I am working. Is there a place where the underwater images are the clearest you've ever seen? We're seeing every fish, we're seeing every detail of structure, and where every bottom contour was visible, where whatever you wanted to see below the surface was real. Do you want to go? Structure Scan 3D is the future of fishing. We can show you how to find fish faster and catch fish in a way you've never experienced. You're watching the Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend, being brought to you live by PowerPole. Bassmaster Live, our Rapala 5 live today, the final day on Toledo Bend, right there. Brandon Polinick, if you were about, to, if you missed what we just saw, you're about 15 <laughs> minutes late, but we will show it to you again at some point during the day, I promise you, put on probably a, multiple times. Put on a clinic, that's for sure, that was awesome. Jason Christie looking for his fifth win with the Bassmaster. Jason Christie, a big weight on day number one, anchored by one giant. About a nine pound plus, but he's been solid for the rest of the time, fishing in a small creek himself on a different side of the lake up there. And John Murray, a, a friend of mine I've known since he, he and I started the same year. Great, great fisherman, and he's won here before at Toledo Bend. 
Catching some big ones. He told me last night, if I can just put them in the boat like I did yesterday, I got a chance to win. Doing something a little different. I hope we get to John Murray soon and Casey Ashley. We've got a good look at what he's doing yesterday. Yeah, Casey's in his wheelhouse, that's for sure. He's throwing a jig, and when he's got a jig in his hand, he's very, very confident. And Casey's been catching really big fish late in the afternoon. All right, the guy who's been catching them better than anyone else from New York State, upstate New York, Jamie Hartman putting his work down here in the south in Toledo Bend and paying big time dividends. Had the lead to start yesterday, takes the lead into today. He's been eclipsed by Brandon Polnick, but it is early on. Jamie Hartman seems to find a way to get a good limit in his box by the end of each day. He really does. You gotta give him credit. He is he has showed the whole world what a versatile fisherman he is. John Murray, I like to think of him as the happy, happy warrior. He's always up for it, ready to go. He goes through the good times and the bad, and he just seems to be as positive anytime you talk to him. Nope. Looks like John's about a mile or so away from where Casey caught some of his fish yesterday that afternoon. Might be better. Hook up. Stay down. Oh my gosh, two little dudes, what are you doing out here? I don't know, I don't think so, but got to check him. Oh wow, 15 inches, Good start, that's all I can say. Take it. Big old school of bait out here a little deeper right now. 10, 12 feet. Maybe there's some big ones with them. Tell me what you got going on here on this spot. Well, it's a long, really tapering reef that the fish would sort of move up and down to spawn and move out and use it as a highway. Well, basically, I started out deeper cranking, which I caught them the first day cranking out here. And then the last two days, haven't had a bite on a crankbait. So I figured I'd start with it and I uh, caught uh, a little fish and then a small keeper. Um, and usually on this place, if there's a couple bass around, there's, there's more in that area. So I'm going to saturate that area for a little bit, see if there's some keepers in there. But that's normally a good sign when you get any kind of bass bites out here. There's, they're usually grouped up a little bit. I hope you didn't eat too many cereal, <laughs> too much cereal this morning watching him go up and down. <laughs> that's, it. that's something different. That's going to be a little bit of something to contend with today. John Murray also has a big bass strategy that he's been tight-lipped about. I think he's going to roll that out a little bit later. We're certainly looking forward to that. But boy, let's look backward about 15 minutes. And <laughs> What did we just see there with Brandon Polinick? Let's take a look at how quickly that came. Less than 18 minutes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, first five and four minutes. Tommy. I'm a rookie here. 
you've done all of this bass life. Have you ever seen catch just that quick? No, that's why I say he set the record right there. <laughs> Absolutely, that's gonna be that's gonna be tough to beat. You can beat the five minute mark for putting a limit in the box. Actually, less than five minutes. Jimmy Hartman wow. just got about half his weight with one fish. He caught a five pound, four ounce centered in bass track. Jamie Hartman, we're, we're not in signal range with him though, so. Yeah, Jamie Hartman, yesterday we had one little inter interlude where we could see him. He's back in the back of a creek and uh, that's where he started he yesterday and he's pinchers. obviously starting there today and getting a similar result that he did yesterday. Big start. Oh, back to Brandon Polinick. That one ate my. He ate my trailer. He's swimming off with it and he just had it by the trailer. Dang it. He doesn't get do a great cast out. without a bite. A little, how about a little Terminator frog action to switch it up? Gosh, look at that thing. Choked it. They're getting bigger. They're getting bigger. That does look like the biggest one we've seen him catch. But we were away for two minutes. He probably caught yeah, five I or mean, six. He may have had 14 <laughs> since then. That's the biggest one we got so far. Let's just do this. Since they're biting so good this morning. Let's go. Yellow black. Let's see. I think blue. Blue. Between blue and yellow. Yellow. That's what I mentioned Wait. earlier. He's catching them and you You'd be crazy to do anything any differently, but he's a lot of time season. being taken up right here with, with much. some right. fish. Did he need some bigger ones? Here's a question, though. If I got, let's see, one. Oh, gosh, dang it. He had one jump out. Oh. Oh. Almost saw what you said yesterday, Davey. Once you get a cold tag on that one, the biggest one about jumped out of the box. No, oh, it did jump out of the box. He didn't just about <laughs> jump out of the box. Right. <laughs> so they're about jumped right out of the box. Well, maybe I'll throw a frog a little while. And that was the first cast with the frog, Terminator popping frog. You see him come ripping out of that grass? Gosh. Tommy, am I getting paid to watch this? <laughs> oh, God, that is fun. It's, it's like one of those crappie trips where you got to designate Sleeves someone to be the box so guy to keep opening it up again and again. It's getting heavy. This is awesome. It's just very, very exciting. Uh, I, I think we only got about seven or eight pounds. We've been catching a fire of them, but most of them haven't been that big yet. Pound and a half yeah, I'd say like a pound and a half to maybe that last one was two and a quarter. Oh yeah, forgot to put a new trailer on. Quit throwing that in the first place. Oh. 
hate to take your eyes away from Brandon Polinick. You try to think in your mind how many fish you're going to miss for every five minutes you're right. away from him. But uh, we got to check out John Murray as well. Had the biggest limit yesterday. And like we said, it's very uh, kind of secretive about it and has a definite big fish strategy. But he's trying a couple of other things here on this spot that he thinks is pretty special. Yeah, but he's outside. He's fishing deeper than, than he has been catching those bigger fish. So looking forward to see once he does move in. But with this wind coming straight in on this flat or reef, as he described uh -huh. it, there could be some some big pre-spawn fish just there moving up. Not He's hooked small. up now. Stay down. Ooh. Stay down. Stay down. Come on, buddy. You can't let them run too much. There's stumps everywhere. Woo! That's what this right here. Fat free spawners. Wow. Man, that's what we want. Look at that fish. What a belly. Wow. Well, that's the way you want to start. Looks like you're crappie. I love it. I love it. Don't mess around, they're probably biting up there, right? Right on the way, there's a foundation right there. And if you hit it right, and, the, and God smiles down on you, you catch one. Because I've hit it a million times and I've caught three big ones like that. Woo! Man! Come on. Shaking like a leaf. That's what you want to start with. Thank you. Lord. What I love about this sport so much. He and I started the same year, so I know he's been fishing about 24 years, and you still shake like a leaf on Sunday <laughs> fishing a Bassmaster Elite. It's awesome. Good one, big one. Big, big one. Come on, buddy, don't. Oh my God. Hope it's a bass. I can't let it go too far. Gosh dang it. Can't let her oh, go this too is far. A big oh, fish. Too much stuff under there. Come on. It's a bass, it's a giant. It might not be a bass. Too big. Too big. Maybe something else. Catfish. Oh yeah. Oh, it's hooked outside the head. Oh, it's barely good. I don't know what to say. I don't think he knows breathing. what to say. I'm almost breathing. I'm almost breathing. I can't, I can't stop shaking, but I'm almost. Look at his fly. Come on, baby. That is a Toledo Band piglet. <laughs> I have no idea, man. Thank you. Thank you. I fished this spot last year 
when Kevin won, I touched three six pounders and lost them all. So uh, when you hook those big ones, you get a little freaky. And I was a little freaked out, but I got it and I gotta get back up there. See, Woo. I can't believe it. They would not hit a crankbait yesterday. I thought that was like a 12 pounder. I can't believe it. Awesome, man. Come on. Get up there. Awesome. Come on. Come on. Come on, girl. Let's get us up there. You can do it with five casts, you can do it with one cast. Two, two different approaches, both paid off pretty well. Oh, oh good. Oh, geez, this is, this is so good, Tom. I don't think there's any way that could be a bass. Oh, my gosh. Listen hey, to Don Murray, the veteran Come on. he is. Get me up there. He can't wait Thank to you. make another cast of that foundation. Come on. The wind is really helping him here, I think. It's, it's got those fish mm. positioned, coming straight in on this foundation yeah. on the front side of it, and so I think it's me they're getting bigger. really, really helping John Murray. I'm saying he's not done. Either. Oh, well, he's not done for sure, because he hasn't even fished where he caught, caught the big, big ones. ones yesterday. Mm. Come on. Come on. They're just trying to get away. They're so hungry, they're still trying to eat. Uh, this is history from, yeah, 2003. Uh, they were inside when I won that tournament. 2012, I, <coughs> I was so ended up with rheumatoid arthritis, I couldn't walk, and I just came here and caught them, got top 25. Uh, last year, 2015, caught them all here. So, yeah, sort of. The spot I fish, um, I know know it pretty well, obviously, and they, they're never in the same spot. But if you fish long enough, you find them. I, I've never found them that big. Usually they're about five or six pounds. Those are seven. So yeah, a little bigger. I made one cast here in practice and caught one a post spawner that was seven or plus. And it had some with it, but I couldn't tell if it was a male or it was a school. And I pulled up here the first day in the afternoon okay. and caught two sixes, back to back casts, and stayed here for two hours, never caught another one. And I pulled up here yesterday morning and fished all this with a crank, never had one bite. And then I moved in with a jerk bait and I caught all my fish on a jerk bait inside. So I don't know why they're here, why they're not here. I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to keep casting. See what happens. Because they're biting on the bend. They are certainly biting on the bend this morning, Tommy. That's the statement of the day. Oh my gosh. This is just incredible to watch. Come on. One more. One more. One more. One more, Biggie. Come on, Biggie. Come on, Biggie. Come on, little biggie. Come on. That one will help. Yeah, that'll help. They're just a little bit bigger on this side than they were on that side, I think. Not much bigger, but it's a little fatter. All I'm going to say, if you're watching Bassmaster Live and you've got a friend that might be sleeping in this morning, call him, text him, whatever, and say you need to watch this because we're watching two clinics. Yeah, your friend will thank you. Yellow, blue, red. Yellow, blue, red. 
Green's good and yellow. Green. Black. Sweet. Jamie Hartman just landed a three and a half pounder. He's now just, probably just, swim right back well, just popped in the leaderboard there. He's three, three pounds back with only two fish. So it's going at it to this morning. Be like Zona and say, is this really the best first hour that. we've no, ever no, had no, on live? Banging <laughs> in that brush. I just got a text from a friend saying you might need to send John Murray some oxygen. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. One of those paper bags to blow in sort of, sort of get the uh, hyperventilation un hey, in check. Absolutely. I'd, I would be doing the same thing. It's amazing the difference in water where Polinick is back up protected, calm as can be, and he's out there in, in the Great Lakes, you know, splashing down over the front deck, both catching them. I want to replay those hands on the pliers just real quickly to remind me. <laughs> Absolutely. How much fun how it is. Yeah, how shook up he was, how, how much of a shock it was. Keep in mind, this guy has won how many U.S. Opens and oh, I mean he's just a Western. We've been I talking mean, about the, rookies all week, and this is a veteran that's right through the center of it, loving every second of it. Long time, big time West Coast guy, Arizona guy, and now he's recently moved to Tennessee. That was a problem I had yesterday. They were biting really good, and just they got so many boats in here, even just little small aluminum boats. And these fish are so shallow and they started banging around in that brush. The fish, I think, just kind of pushed up out of the grass. Hopefully this morning we get a little bit of time without that happening. Backside, when these backside. fish eat, they're kicking up dirt. Well, yeah, there's two stumps out here next to this foundation. And if I miss the foundation, which is easy to do because I don't have a buoy out or anything, I'll hit that stump and I get it on the backside and I don't really want to get on top of it. So I'm coming around the backside, see if it'll pull off the stump, which sometimes it does um, without getting right on the spot. But yeah, it's a, it's a nasty little spot to fish. And literally I've used there's probably 15 crankbaits down there that broke off that I want to stay off. I'm just down to no crankbaits. I got to, I didn't plan on cranking today. I planned on throwing a jerkbait all day. I didn't even have this out and rigged. I was gonna, just the wind, I thought, well, maybe I'll try a crankbait again. So I got to go get it. See, we're in five feet of water here. We're sitting about 12 out there. To me, the fish are spawning on this flat right here, five to eight feet of water. And I'm catching them right where they're moving up out of the deep water on that foundation. Yesterday they were up here spawning. Not easy. But I don't care. I'm good. I'm golden. Whew. Come on. Six, and snug and six. I don't know if I can reach. I'll try to get it with my rod, but if not. Not gonna be, not gonna be that easy, is it? Not what you want to deal with when the action is hot and heavy, but if you're out of crankbaits, you're out of crankbaits. You just got to get that job done. But John Murray striking big time earlier today. Just an eye-popping bass in Toledo Bend. <laughs> Toledo Bend piglet. <laughs> I think that one qualifies as a Toledo Bend pig. That's not a, a mama piglet. hog right there is what that is. Absolutely. I want to see the hog if that's the piglet. John Murray, big time score early on on the final day. Could he be looking at his 
his third Bassmaster win here. Well, for all the world, if he can keep that pace up, he will be looking at his third Bassmaster win. But we've got so many anglers yet to hear from yet and a lot to see on Toledo Bend. Day one, we're just getting started and what we have seen so far. You're watching the Bassmaster Elite it's like at Toledo Bend. They went, they being brought to you live six by man Power Pole. Whole tournament, the final day. And that little place wasn't any bigger than the off limit there at Toledo Bend. Tommy. Well, you caught me unaware there. <laughs> all, all the excitement. Everybody's getting a little caught up in it there. Talking about John Murray and his history with the Bass Masters and making some history for us this morning. Some big, big bass. Can't blame us for getting a little excited in here this morning. <laughs> no, not at all. You can't run too much. There's stumps everywhere. He mentioned that he had put his hands on three six pounders on this same spot last year and didn't land a single one of them. He's getting it done Woo! this morning, landing them all. That's what's this out here. Fat free spawners. Good one, big one. This is Toledo Band Piglet. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea, man. All in the first hour with John Murray. Here's something else that happened in the Brandon Pollen. Good one. If you miss this, you need to take a look. Two. Four straight cash. <laughs> Three in a row. Three in a row. Four in a row. Four in a row. That's a limit. First call of the day. I don't know how long that took, but it didn't take very long. Got him. Here we go. I don't even know why I'm wasting my time calling the fellas. We can't. Leaderboard has been shaken up. That's to be sure as we've seen what we've seen here today. John Murray, of course, taking over the big lead right there with 16 pounds of fish, maybe even more. Uh, we're just reckon it, reckoning about it. Gordon to Bass Track and Jamie Hartman hanging in there as well. He's He's doing his job back in the back of the creek where he started yesterday. Hard to get a picture of him. I wish we could see what he's doing today, Davey. I sure do because Jamie Hartman has, has really been fishing well, and we've seen guys make their charge at him the last couple of days, but he's been able to hold them off. Fishing a lot of different ways. Caught a few of his fish yesterday sight fishing. Said he hadn't done that at all. Let's take a look and have our Yamaha taste the bait before we get too far into this day. We need to, may need to taste several Good baits to see today, you guys but back here's again Brandon Pollard. Yeah. Hey, they want you to show me the lure and explain to me what you're doing and why they're eating so heavy. He's coming. He's coming. Catch him on a little 3 8 ounce swim jig with a Zoom Super Speed Craw on there, white, and I'm just... I'm popping it or cracking it, doing the Alabama shake, Christy shake, whatever you want to call it, wherever you're from. And uh, it just looks like a little fleeing shad trying to get through that grass. It comes through the grass really well. And, and you know, and just those fish are eating it when it comes through that grass, just like the shad moving through the grass. That's what they're doing. They're up here feeding. A little bit of a shad spawn going on in the morning. But there's little concentrations of them. Uh, like I was saying, those little ditches that run in here. Those fish move in schools in those ditches and then they pull up in that grass and they ambush all that shad. So like right there where we're catching them, there's a really good ditch. It's actually the major one that feeds this flat. And then right up here by these bushes, it's kind of a little secondary ditch. And yesterday, this is actually the one the big ones were using.
Tommy, we talked about shad spawn at Conroe. We're talking about it here at Toledo Bend. But we also have seen how good it can be, but it, it's a hit and miss situation. These shad move up into the shallow water grass or they move up on something hard. In John Murray's case, we just need five of the right bites. Casey Ashley's case, those shad are a little deeper. But here, these, oh. these fish are, are right up in this shallow grass and it, it'll be oh, on yeah, fire until that sun gets sure above the trees. But what happens in the morning when that sun's down, these fish, they get in those ditches and they disperse out across these flats. And then you see when that sun starts getting up, all our bites will, oh gosh, I don't know what's right there, but it bit it again. All our bites will start coming, <laughs> wrapped around the cameraman. Uh, all our bites will start, I think we got it. We got it, we got it. We're hooked up on a big one. All our bites will start coming around the little shade pockets from the bushes. So that one will help, I think. No, maybe not. Looked bigger when she came out up there. I don't think that's gonna help. Yeah, he's not gonna help. You can see how I'm just popping that jig, popping it, popping it. And that little speed trial's down there fluttering. Just looks like a little shad trying to get away. That might be a big one. Yep. That's more like what we need right there. Oh. Yes. That's more like it. Oh, I hooked her in the tongue. We're gonna have to watch that one, make sure she's okay. Mm. That's more of the kind we need right there. Make that one our smallest one today. Things will be looking. Mighty fine, mighty fine. The boat's kind of turned into a little bit of a mess here this morning. <laughs> Catching all these fish. We know white's good. Blue. See, I took the divider out of this live well so that when I catch 40 pounds today, I know we'll be good. It'll be able to fit. Good upgrade. Check that out. Sweet. Let's get another one. I think that was on back to back casts. If I do believe. We've got three. Three and a half. Yeah, probably. It's gotta be. We got drone catches, we got GoPro catches, we got Bassmaster Live catches. Catches on catches. Yes, we do have Bassmaster Live catches, as a matter of fact. And if you joining us late this morning, you might want to get the device over close to the toaster and the coffee maker, because I don't know what you're going to miss. Uh, but here's what big. you missed in the first half hour of Bassmaster Live this morning. Brandon Polinick, cast after cast. Yeah, Brandon said that he had caught fish in this yeah, particular creek in years past, but the first day of practice bigger. he went in there and they were just little small fish. Stopped in there yesterday afternoon and caught some good ones, so we're certainly glad he started there this morning and put on a clinic. It's a shad spawn situation. These fish have moved back in this creek this morning and now they are, they're done. You can tell by the looks of these fish, they're not the big piglets like John Murray's catching out there, the pre-spawners, but catching some really nice fish that are up here feeding on these shad early in the morning. And it's just every cast, every cast. Swimming a white jig, we can see with a zoom trailer through this grass. 
and just doesn't get any better than this. Yes, it just uh, behaves just like an escaping Close. shad and they can't stand it. It's four in a row. And they're basically up in this grass schooling. He mentioned this morning they're up there moving around, boiling. They're just, they're just schooling in the shallow water grass because there's just thousands and thousands of shad that are up there spawning. That's a limit. First cold of the day. I don't know how long that took, but it didn't take very long. Got him. Oh, that one will help, I think. Here we go. If you say live, we'll give you a fish. He catches, I don't know how many, probably seven, eight, nine fish swimming that white jig that picks up a, I think he said a Terminator popping frog. And this might be the fish here, and then catches catches one immediately on it. Should help. He choked it. Twelve fish in the first hour of this inform us right now. That's phenomenal. It, it, it really, really is. On Sunday. <laughs> on a Sunday. Gosh, he's ripping out here. How about a little Terminator frog action to switch it up? Fish bite this morning to mess around with it much. Oh, that one will help. Yes, sir, that one will help. Good little upgrade. We're having as much fun as Brandon on, on day two of this tournament on Friday. We were only able to capture four fish being caught live and Brandon Polinick tripled that this morning in, in short order. And we're certainly glad of that. I know the viewers are too. Been a tough place to get pictures, and, and I just don't think the lake's been turned on as much as it has been this morning. The wind is certainly, certainly helping John Murray out on that reef that he talked about that has a foundation. But these fish are just living back in this creek. Yep. Brandon Polinick is catching every single one of them. Part of the puzzle we'll try to figure out today is whether this uh, the conditions are hurting the side yes. fishermen today. If they're, if they're suffering That's as much like. as these guys are prospering. Well, what else you might have missed in that first uh, hour of coverage, first half hour of coverage, was this man, John Murray, the veteran from Arizona, now living in Tennessee. Always done well here, seemingly always done well here at Toledo Bend. And He's got a plan. This was earlier. Stay down. Ooh. Stay down. Stay down. Come on, buddy. You can't let them run too much. There's stumps everywhere. That's what's this out here. Fat free spawners. Now that's the way you want to start. It looks like you're crappie. I love it. I love it. Good one, big one. Oh no. Big, big one. Come on, buddy, you don't. You notice how excited John Murray is here. He said last year he put his hands on three six pounders on the same Max. spot and didn't land a single one of them. Too far? Gosh dang it. Can't let her go too far. There's too much stuff under there. Come on. This fish is fighting so much he even thinks it's a catfish at one point. It's It might not be a bat. Too big. Too big. That's a strong, That's a strong fish. Cat fish. Oh yeah. Oh, it's hooked outside the head. Hold on that big old pig. <laughs> I'm almost breathing. I'm almost breathing. 
is a Toledo band piglet. <laughs> I have no idea, man. Thank you. Thank you, John Murray. That was some great stuff. Him and Brandon Bolinick putting on a show so far today. Back to John Murray Live. Have my old cheese cheap knot. Still good. That stump out there is sort of my marker for where I need to start vision. We cut those first two out here. So yeah, anyway, this is a Series 5XD KVD special that uh, has a wide bill. I got the bill that's hopefully defect off these stumps. And uh, it's not doing that great a job, but it's the right size. These white bass are the exact same size. It dives perfect. Dives in that five to eight, 10, 12 feet of water. And uh, I guess more than anything, they bite it. So I'm, I like it. Throwing it on a 14 pound line. John wrapped it all up. The, they like it, and that's why I like it. <laughs> now, is that the one he was trying to retrieve? I'm, I'm assuming he got it back. I, I'm not sure. He, he he mentioned, if you weren't watching earlier, he mentioned when he got hung up, he hated to go up on the spot and and try to get his bait back, that he had lost a lot of baits there. But he didn't plan on starting this morning cranking, but he just had a little gut feeling, I guess, and it certainly was a good one. So he says he didn't have many crankbaits in his boat. He had to go get that bait. He just retied it. We had left him there trying to trying to retrieve it when we went to break. I'm yeah, assuming he got to it. To be kidding. Just got hung again. Not the same spot. Mm. We have a viewer at home saying. Most guys don't like those crankbaits out here. We had a viewer at home the saying he's going to start a crankbait Trot drone line infested delivery service. <laughs> Catfish line full. Unfortunately, that would be against the rules for him to get a <laughs> crankbait from somebody that's not competing in the tournament. I guess that's why it's good to be liked. You can run around to some of the top 12 and say, hey, you got this crankbait I can borrow? Yeah, if, if Kevin was fishing today, oh, yeah. I might you sure? make a little jog around yeah. at least a mile or two. Hey, and say, how you doing, Kevin? <laughs> about good a few to see you as always. <laughs> how about a few of those baits? <laughs> We've been saying all week, Tommy, that anybody could, could win this thing if you make it into the top 12. And John Murray got up in there yesterday. We hadn't seen him all week, hadn't talked about mm. him. And boy, once he, he's got this opportunity here on Sunday, he's certainly taking advantage of it. Fun to watch, that's for sure. And then the sweet spot he's talking about, where he's getting, I mean, the, the, the centerpiece of it is an old home foundation, yep. as I understand. Yep. As, 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 if I heard him right. Or barn foundation or something from 60 years ago. You've mentioned several times this week that this lake isn't that old. No. There's Jason Christie. Uh, I don't know if we had signal. I don't believe we did. He just caught a four and a half pounder. He's up to eight, eight on the day. He okay. started a little more than four pounds behind the leader. So he's in the mix if he keeps, keeps catching him like that.
And it's That's so interesting. Doing. White bass are eating those. <laughs> We've seen three different guys fishing three totally different ways. Absolutely. All I mean, catching they, fish. Paul and Nick and, and, and Murray couldn't be more different. It's so much fun to watch both of them. Christy's way up north. That's why we're getting poor signal. Way up there. Well, that's 100% better pictures than we got of Christy yesterday. Yes, that's exactly right. Fishing Which was really zero. Yeah. Fishing is, stained water. Right you can tell he's way up north. That's it. Oh. Oh, God damn, right there. I'll be a spotty or a white bass. That's the cast. Talk a little bit about. The foundation, because you don't see this in a lot of places. Because this lake is not very old, when they backed this up, obviously there were homes, there were barns, there were places where people were living, and those foundations are still there underwater. And it's always a great place to to try to offshore fish if you've got a foundation that's shallow enough that that those fish want to relate to it. Rock and hard bottom is hard to find on a place like Toledo Bend, but obviously around oh, old home geez. foundation, you're going to have good. brick, rock, that come sort of on, thing. Come on. Think about the foundation, just think of the record setting performance down at Falcon, how big foundations played in that. Same sort of situation, a newer lake, and boy, that, that was the juice. Absolutely. Butane tanks left in the ground <laughs> yeah. can, can be great targets. It's hard, it's hard to expand on that pattern, though, on some places. <laughs> just don't find a butane tank in the right depth very often. And on most of the, here's another little tidbit, on most of the newer maps that we have that go into the electronics, uh, Lake Master probably mm -hmm. in this case, they show these foundations. feet. It's two feet off the side. Thank you. Game on. Yeah. Sarah, I don't like that cat. <sighs> we saw Brandon put on a Shad Spawn Jig Swim Clinic this morning. I talked to Jason Christie last night. And he's fishing so far up north, he said that he's not seeing many shad, but a lot of real, real small fry. Really, really small fry. Two and for two. he and I agreed it's probably two shad fry because the shad spawn happened earlier up north in this little bit warmer water. And he said that he's having to make, unlike Brandon, those fish are just schooling in that sure. grass. He's having to make a lot of 
pitches to, to willow trees, buck brush, log, any piece of wood that the fry, is shad fry, are relating to the stuff, but because those bass are feeding on probably 1 16th, 1 8th ounce shad fry, that it's hard, harder to get these fish to bite, even though they're still relating to shad, but the mature shad have moved out and the fry is still up around these targets that, that he's throwing the spinnerbait around. That's interesting. That's something we haven't seen all week. Four box, no. four pictures up at one time of anglers on Toledo Bend. What's happened today? Did we get a new satellite that just got launched in the air that we're using? Palm or Sunday or something. Yeah, Palm Sunday, could be that. It's a blessing for sure. Yep. Casey Ashley, of course, lower right, not too far from the man right above him, John Murray. Brandon Polinick and Jason Christie will take it. We had a little coverage with Jason Christie the second day of the tournament, the first day of live. And, and I said, wow, if he's able to figure them out up there where he's fishing, not a lot of guys in our tournaments in recent years have caught them up there. Mm. And don't think you'll see a lot of boats and the, the little bit of coverage we've had, and we saw one local boat around him on, on Friday, but all right. he's got this all to himself. What you telling me that we need to go and catch one? <laughs> Jason Christie started his day in fourth place, four pounds back. He's still in fourth place, but now he's 12 pounds back. Man at the upper right's responsible for the, that outcome. A little bubba shot, power shot. With all the fireworks we've seen this morning, keep in mind, Casey Ashley has caught his big fish in the afternoon. John Murray has gotten two or three big bites, he said, every afternoon, so. Heads up. <laughs> and Got Brandon Polinick just gets bites all the time. I'm kidding. Got him. Thought it wasn't Tonight, four couple hooks. Wait. Spawning fish, not the fish and skirt. Tungsten weight. Dark, I'm eating. Keeper looks like for Christy. Did misspeak there. I said Christy was twelve pounds back. It's the Fifth place is 12 pounds back, and that'd be Casey Ashley now, who started out within five pounds. If you missed it this morning, <laughs> Brandon Polinick put on a show, and we're gonna take another look at that. Good one. Swimming his white jig. Chad's falling off the pier in this shallow grass, not far from the takeoff. He started the day six pounds, six ounces back at Hartman. He made that six Three pounds in up in about five minutes? Yeah. <laughs> Three in a row. 
Four in a row. Four in a row. Before he made his first cast in there, he was moving up to it with his troll motor and said there's a lot of a lot of moving around up there and boiling the water and there we go. He just started putting them in a the boat. Yeah, so they're just schooling all over the place here. That was fun to watch. That's so was this. Fun. Those are just that's the difference in post-spawn and pre-spawn bass. Both of those pre-spawn fish, that, that one. Piglet. Piglet. <laughs> I call that a haul. Fun stuff from John Murray right there and Brandon Polinick. Let's do some Dick c -Tech. Tires and wheels, Bassmaster Elite Series trivia. How many Texas top 50 largemouth bass? How many of Texas's top 50? I think that's what's meant there. Largemouth bass on record have come from Toledo Bend. That's a good one. I would say it'd be more than that number. I would have guessed more than that. If you'd have put 20 up there, I would have gone with 20. See what you think. We'll take a break here, come back and answer that one for you. It's already surprising. We don't even know the answer yet. Toledo Bend is certainly the, the big fish factory of Texas, along with Falcon. you got to think about Falcon. You oh, know yeah. that? That yeah. skews the figures a little bit, too. So we're not going to throw out any more clues. Everybody guess. Come back. We'll have some more for a, what a day it's been so far on Toledo Bend. Tennessee, how's everybody doing today? We are excited to get this season kicked off. It all starts here. Barely hooked, baby. Barely hooked. Ooh, yes! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Stay down, stay down, stay down, open your mouth, open your mouth. Yes. <sighs> Thank you. Yeah! That's a big one. That's for you, Mama. How about that right there, now? Woo! Ooh, yes! 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 Master Elite second event for 2017 at legendary Lake Okeechobee. So much tradition here and so many amazing eye-popping <laughs> results. Yeah, buddy's right. Yes! Yes! Give me some high five on Yes. Take a closer look at that one. I ain't never flipped a fish that big before, I don't think. Woo! Damn.
You're watching the Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend, being brought to you live by PowerPole. Things popping on Toledo Bend Reservoir here on the border between Louisiana and Texas, the final day of this Bassmaster Elite event number three of 2017. Very important tournament to grab here at the end of the day, and someone will win it, that's for sure. Let's get back to our Dick Tech Times and Wheels trivia. This is kind of a surprising question, just the question itself. How many of Texas' top 50 largemouth bass have come from Toledo Bend? You'd think it would be in the 15, 20, maybe even more area right there. But there's your options, 0, 1, 3, or 7. i got to go with 7, baby. I would say 7. I would have thought more, but if that's the highest Overall number, I'm going to go Texas with that. Overall in Texas, we're looking at here. Overall in Texas, which we get that from the Share Locker program. Yeah, Amistad, Falcon, all these other places you forget. You yeah, know, you're a big exactly place. Right. I'm going to back up and say C. C. All right, I'll stay with seven. What was your guess at home? Was it zero? Oh, my goodness. That is a shocker right there. Why That's, aren't we fishing this dump? Let's none. get out of here and go somewhere else. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, well, Lake Fork has like 30 or 40 of them. Oh, Lake Fork, of course. Of course. Texas just has so many great yes, fisheries. big bass fisheries, and they mm. manage it we've so been, well. We've been either correct or close every time, but yeah, had not no even clue. close. Had Let's no get clue. back out on the lake to this second-rate Toledo Bend Lake that we're stuck on here. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, Toledo Bend is awesome and a great place to have a tournament. Look at his moves throughout the throughout the tournament and throughout the day. Look at those catches by John Murray. Won the Open Championship on Toledo Bend back in 2003, and John Murray today comes from four pounds back in third place, busting all the way to the top with a two-pound lead over Jamie Hartman. It was more than that for a while. Obviously, Jamie Hartman has been at work. We're trying to get details on that. We have no pictures of our leader to start the day, Jamie Hartman, as yet. But, uh, boy, the comp competition is hot and heavy. We showed you what happened with Brandon Polinick early this morning that you missed if you weren't with us in the first hour. Can't show this enough either. First hour. Really can't. Heroics from John Murray. Murray won hey, that man. tournament here by 16 pounds. Come on, buddy. You can't let them run too much. There's stumps everywhere. I can't stop thinking about him mentioning that he had his hands, just like right there, on three six pounders on this same Woo! place last year. That's Didn't a catch a single one of them, but. Fat free spawners. Now that's the way you want to start. It looks like you're crappie. I love it. It's hard to estimate how big it. that fish is. With, <laughs> it's it, abnormal looking. Could be four, could be five and a half maybe. Oh no. Big, big one. Come on buddy, don't. And if you've never fished on Toledo Bend, some places we go, the fish are just stronger than others. They fight, and here's a, a good example of what one feels like at Toledo Bend. This is a big fish, but just look at it. He's about to break his rod on the side of the boat. just pins him down. Look at it. <laughs> Can't let her go too far. There's too much stuff under there. Come on. Come on. That's a bass. It's a giant. It might not be a bat. Too big. Too big. There's something else. Catfish. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's hooked outside my head. That's no catfish. I'm almost breathing. I'm almost breathing. This is a Toledo Band piglet. <laughs> a dream come true, even if you're just sneaking off to fish on a Monday afternoon, you do that on the final day of a Bassmaster Elite Series tournament. Man, oh man, is that huge. John Murray, gonna show you where he is right now. West side, Toledo Bend. A little north of our launch. Not not far from Casey Ashley, but we were on Casey quite a bit yesterday, not John Murray. We talked about this main lake point. 
fish could be moving in and out, and John Murray just showed you two pre-spawn fish. We've seen primarily post-spawn fish. A few people catching fish were actually on the bed. Oh, God. But to catch those pre-spawn fish, they're just going to weigh a lot more. And John Murray showed you why you want to try to target these. It's hooked up again. Hold on. Oh, I thought he was bigger than that. I thought he was bigger than that. Hit him right in the head. Jeez. Went sideways like he was a big one. But he's a keeper, right? That's all that matters. Jamie Hartman had just caught his third. It was small, one pounder, to climb within two pounds, and now Murray just went he back He hit it harder than the big ones. I think he just ran into it. The thing to Down half. think about, John Murray's got three really good fish in, the, in his live well. And that fish helps a little, but We've seen guys just gradually, Brandon Polinick was a so perfect example this morning, just increasing his weight. He hit, caught his limit real quick, increasing his weight by ounces. Mm -hmm. John Murray, that's his only small fish. He still doesn't even have a limit and has taken the lead. I wonder if Casey is not Casey and John are not, they're not really close. John told me he thought they were about a mile apart. I wonder I if Casey that. can see John Murray. That's what I was wondering all as these well. big fish. And you wonder that probably the same reef, the same structure they're fishing. Yep. Took off to the side, you know. I saw very little cranking from Casey yesterday. The hazardous, I mean, you, obviously, John Murray demonstrated that. You can get hung up very easily with your crankbait. It's timber strewn bottom here. Get hung up so much you can be running low on crankbaits. Wow. Like John. Too big, man. Yeah. Left, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, I caught that little one right where I caught the little one the last time. So maybe we'll get the big one then I get the snake. That is nasty, whatever that is. That don't even give. I just can't pull it this way. I gotta sort of come this way. If I pull it in, it seems like I snag every time. I thought you guys traveled with wash tubs full of crankbaits. <laughs> Especially going to Toledo Bend. Five X's, six X's just <laughs> rolling out the windows. Yep, we do, but you can't carry all we can't we travel with so much tackle you can't put it all in a boat to sink the well, boat. There you go. And like he mentioned this morning. He didn't, he didn't plan on doing this. I'm, I'm glad that he did for us, for sure, but he didn't plan on cranking. He's been catching his fish on a, on a swim bait and a jerk bait. Up shallower than this, so he hasn't even hit where he's caught a lot of his bigger fish. Ooh. This year, he said he's caught them here and had them hooked up here in the past, but this particular spot, he hasn't, hasn't done much on so far, but. The wind changing changes changes the fishery every single day. That's why you got to go out with a open mind and fish the moments. And in this case, for John Murray, like Kevin Van Dam said, the wind is his friend. Oh, getting it today. Looks like Brandon's moved out a little bit from where he caught all those this morning. It's still in the same same creek, but <laughs> that'd be a trot line. It just felt just like it was gonna be jump. That's why I don't cast right there, because there's something bad there. I pulled it up a couple days ago. Trot line or something. I th yeah, it's off that stick and it runs and man, when you catch it, it feels so good for 30 seconds or 10 seconds.
Glad we got, it's a little shaky, but got service with Jason Christie. Keep in mind, he caught a nine pounder on the first day of this tournament, so you never know what's gonna happen. He's been up. saying all week long, I'm just not on the fish to win, but I'm gonna ride that nine pounder as far as I can ride him. Christy six pounds back as we stand right now in third place. Which is only two thirds of a nine pounder. There you go. And he's proven he can, he's doing the right thing to be able to catch one. I think if Jason Christie had a 20 pound lead going into last day, he would say, oh, I'm just trying to ride my 20 pound lead. He's, he's so nonchalant. Of Got his hood pulled up, head down and fishing. David, did you talk to Jamie Hartman? What is his, is his mindset going into championship Sunday with this lead? When I talked to him last night, the first thing he said, you can tell he's, he's excited more so than he had been. And when I talked to him after the first day, he said, man, I'm just, I had a terrible practice. I'm just junk fishing. And I said, I've won tournaments junk fishing. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Just do a little this, a little that, and try to take advantage of the condition each day. Last night he said his first sentence was, I'm worried. I said, why is that? Well, I've, I don't know about the wind. It's supposed to blow really hard tomorrow and this, that, and the other. But the, he, he said I'm worried, but he, he had a sense of confidence for sure going into the last day and having done the same thing at Cherokee. Even though it's his first year, you could sense a little you know, confidence. He was just concerned about he didn't think he had enough areas to fish, which we all worry about that. It's Toledo Bend. You've got lots of different options, and he did several things yesterday that he hadn't earlier in the tournament, and they worked out for him. So don't be worried. Just go fishing. He's, he's been able to hold his own, but John Murray catching these big fish, it changes everything. And still doesn't have his limit. You've never been to Toledo Bend. It's not a, not a big generating lake, not a big power generating lake. The, the, this is their current that we're looking at now. The wind is, is creating things that maybe you're positioning fish to benefit guys like John Murray. You're exactly right, Tommy. Exactly right. Especially on a foundation, something like this offshore, probably some rock, some brick, who knows, cement block. When you have current, those fish, instead of suspending around this foundation, they will move right and get close to the, the rocks and that sort of thing. And especially with the crankbait, when it deflects off, off of a rock, a piece of the foundation, what have you, then those fish just can't resist but just bite that bait. And we experience the lack of that wind, uh, you know, the doldrums that you go through. Day, day two coverage there, watching uh, Jamie Hartman out there. Everything just coming to a halt out there when that yep. place slicks off. And most people think, oh, it's such a beautiful day, we need to go fishing. And typically, that's not your best fishing day. Yesterday, it was like it's enjoyable to be out there. Pockets that's around the bushes book. when the sun got up, I'd get a bite. Get Jason a Christie on the left, take a look at that one. Nice keeper. From Jason that'll Christie. Move, that'll move Jason up. Number four. Closer. Before, did you say? Suit? That's number four. Christy, okay. Well, the one guy we're not seeing and we really wish we could see would be our leader to start the day. He's in second place right now, Jamie Hartman. Lucky, Jamie Hartman, lucky for us. Steve Bowman is our Triton on the line guy on the spot this morning. And Steve Bowman, what's going on with Jamie Hartman? Where are you, basically? Well, we're, we're within sight of, almost within sight of the dam in the back of uh, what they call Mule Creek. And he's, uh, you know, he's rocking along. I don't think he's in danger yet of course that Murray keeps up the pace that he's on and it's it's a scary deal but he started the day with a five five and a half and and then put in about a three and a half and now he's got a two so he's he's uh he's building a a, a fairly nice uh stringer of fish he's on pace to maybe hit hit a 20 pound sack and so uh, the, the one thing that is different here than from what I understand with uh, Murray and the others is that and this is calm as glass up here. It's really protected from the wind. Um, and, I mean, it's just, it's about as, it, it would probably help him if he had a little bit of wind. 
Well, tell us what his, how he's been sort of splitting up his approaches. What, what different things has he been doing and what day parts, what times of day has he been, has he been uh, hitting on all those different things? Well, I mean, he's had a good start here every morning. I sent you guys a uh, location yesterday that, that, that that's where we are. And, and uh, it's kind of a transition area, the mouth of a secondary creek that goes into Mill Creek. And it's got uh, some humps and it's got some ridges and it's got a bunch of timber. Uh, there's some strands of grass, scattered grass. There's a lot of bait in here. Fish are actually schooling at times around it. He caught a schooler a while ago, about two pounds. But He's he's throwing uh, you know a jig, football jig, uh, sometimes a Carolina rig, that kind of thing. He's fishing for these transitional fish that are either pre spawn or post spawn. And uh, yesterday he switched and and went up on the bank uh, about about this time, maybe a little later, and started catching some sight fishing. So I know that that wasn't in his original game plan. So he may be doing that. I'm sitting here watching him now. He's putting rods up. He's on the deck of the boat taking rods off the deck, and putting them in the uh, rod box and, and bringing others out. So he may be fixing to make a change, uh, you know, and going up on the bank. Uh, I know talking to him, he's like, you know, and Davey will test this. The spawn here lasts forever. These waves don't come all at once and then leave. They they come in spurts, and they and and so so the fish will move up shallow, and then they'll be gone, and then there'll be some more, and then they'll be they'll be gone, and then, and so on and so on for a pretty long period of time. So he's actually, to, from what I can tell, he's uh, incorporating every segment of the spawn pre spawn the spawn and post spawn into his game plan. Um, you know, and, I, and my guess is is that uh, he's got some places where he can get some good ones. He's already caught some good ones here. Not much pressure down here. I'm, I don't see any other competitors at all. Steve, you sent us a, 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 a little map that you'd done, a little picture you'd taken of uh, uh, the contour, uh, where he was catching my, probably a starting place yesterday, and as the, obviously uh, where we're looking at that spot right there, and some... Uh, one of the things that marked it was some access to some pretty steep drop-offs, some deep water access very close by. Yep, always right. always the key to have that contour change. What time of day yesterday, Bowman, did did Hartman go up and on the bank and start sight fishing? Uh, right now, I mean, it's about this time. And okay. uh, he's actually putting his life vest on now, and he's giving us a little curly bird saying he's fixing them food now with it. He, he he left this area. Let me back up. He left this area and then went and get a couple of little uh, secondary points that had some scattered grass and that kind of thing on it. And caught a couple of two and a half pound class fish. And then he went uh, sight fishing. So, but uh, but I would think he's getting close to doing that. It's got to be weighing pretty heavily on it because they hit the bank pretty good. And 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 the pressure that is up here, the local pressure that is up here, they're all on the bank. He's been watching guys sight fish uh, in this little area all morning. So um, my guess is, is he's thinking, I got to get, got to get into that that game as well. You know, that that's just a guess. Uh, but it's calm, clear, it's be- absolutely beautiful day, and uh, it's perfect sight fishing conditions right now. When we covered, we were able to get some good coverage of him on day number two uh, at a certain part of the day, which he went out either to the main lake or, or the main part of the big creek there, fishing, looking like basically in the boat lane, and he had a little success there too. Did he get to that yesterday, or is that something he's still got in his back pocket for today? I, I, that's still, I, I think that he did some of that yesterday afternoon by the time that we got off of him. The wind was blowing pretty good yesterday, so we had to get off of him early because we're we're old and, and decrepit, and we don't like uh, racing across both three and four footers. So we left before he caught his last cull and fish. Uh, but yeah, if you and Davey can, can attest to this, a lot of these boat lanes are uh, built around the creek channels, and and so there's a lot of good fishing right in the boat lane. If you look at the drops and and so forth, and I mean you can go. This is one of those lakes that's. Uh, flat by nature but you can go from 50 foot to three foot and 10 feet in some of these places around these boat lanes and uh it gets kind of scary because of all the the timber um but you know he my guess is is that he's going to play he's going to continue playing the game that he played yesterday which includes some sight fishing 
Well, let me ask you this. I mean, talk about his attitude for a guy who's uh, really fishing in only his third Bassmaster Elite Series event, got the lead going into the final day. Is it typical of someone uh, who's who's thrust in that position? No, he, this guy's a pro, man. Uh, uh, he's a pro. Uh, I would say that, you know, you look down through that, that list of guys that are behind him, you say, man, those are, those are giant killers, you know. But in, in this case, he's the David, and they're the Goliath, and they're chasing him down. But but I, he is he is playing it like a pro. I mean, he, I hadn't seen him get – he's pulled up here this morning, and that boat ride this morning, when they took off from the launch, uh, there's three and four footers right there, and it took him a while to get here. And and the, the only thing he said, man, it, my, my rods are just all screwed up, you know. And he he sat down there like if it was me, I'd be itching to cast. He sat down there and got everything back in place, and and just never really it never rattled him a bit. And uh, you know, and then a few minutes later, he's got a five pounder on. And I mean, it, this isn't uh, this isn't a green green rookie this guy has got has got his uh head together and and uh seems to be like he's got a heck of a game plan a rhino a rookie in name only thank you steve bowman and i will say this you're not old and decrepit you're still in the full flower of youth don't sell yourself <laughs> short steve bowman out there providing us some good stuff from uh, our leader to start the day jamie hartman we got casey ashley just hooked up got him a keeper Things still happening out there on Toledo Bend. <laughs> what a story we have today for you. What great pictures we've had for you. Got our fingers crossed for much, much more of the same as we move on into our day. Finish our first couple of hours of fishing here. And John Murray on top, holding on. Jamie Hartman trying to eat into that lead just a little bitty bit. Jason Christie really kind of holding their position. But this was a uh, light key. I've got to tell you, we're going to take a break here in oh, about an hour's time. And Wrap up, our, wrap up our first three hours of Bassmaster Live, and then we're back with the uh, afternoon Woo! session, 12.30 to 3.30. So you can mark it down your plans, include those times. Don't Love miss it. it, because Casey Ashley and John Murray both have told me that they were catching their bigger fish in the afternoon. If John Murray catches bigger fish in the afternoon today, <laughs> look out. Yeah, things are going to start looking up for these guys in the afternoon. Boy, we have seen so much today. That one right there is going to be the uh, iconic picture of day number four right there so far. As you say, you never know what's coming up. The, day at, the weigh in coming up today at 4 15 p.m. will crown our champion, the Cypress Bend Park. Be a big crowd on hand for that. So much to look forward to today on Bassmaster.com. So great to have you with us on this Sunday. We're going to take a short, short break. Break it off for just a few minutes and then we'll come right back. The Bassmaster Elite at Toledo Bend is brought to you by Shell Rotella, Yamaha, Triton Boats, Toyota, Power Pole, and by Skeeter Boats. You're watching the Bassmaster Elite to Toledo Bend, being brought to you live by PowerPool. Well, we have been live this morning, alive with fish catching. How about the last day at the Geico Bassmaster Classic a couple of weeks ago, alive with fish catching from this guy, Jordan Lee, the eventual champion of the world. What a day, I'll never forget it, Dave. Yeah, Tommy, this has been exciting watching this morning. And we've seen two guys put on a clinic, John Murray and Brandon Polnick. But what Jordan Lee did on the final day of the Classic, if you haven't seen it, and I don't think anyone has because this wasn't live. We right. had a steel camera on it. It was simply incredible. Yes, absolutely. You will see it all on our coverage of that. We've got coverage from uh, day one and two from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Saturday, April 15th, Sunday, April 16th, the next day, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Time. You'll see so many things you were not able to see in Bassmaster live coverage from Lake Conroe. Looking forward to that. Is this Jamie Hartman live? Looks like Jamie Hartman. Moments yeah. ago, Jamie Hartman. Now we got him on camera. Okay. No good one. Nope, not funny. Ah. 
I got a quick question, Ronnie. Is Ock Defoe still leading Angler of the Year? Yes, after yesterday's weigh in, his lead was roughly 10 to 15 points. Jason Williamson jumped into second, gained a lot of points yesterday, so that, that closed the gap some. Uh, that's what that's what I thought. But I we get we get messages and questions sent in on the phone. Ot Defo texts me. I can't I can't turn it off. Wish <laughs> I was fishing today so I wouldn't be watching. I can't turn it off. The guy's leading angler of the year. He just fished five days in a row, six six days in a row, <laughs> and he can't stop watching this. That well, shows you what kind of morning we've he had. He picked a good day to tune in. That is absolutely, we've had a struggle, I will say, our first two days of coverage, but today has been gangbusters. Everything popping all over the lake. Hey, I wonder if Dave Mercer's been watching. Triton on the line with Dave Mercer. Well, I know what he's got his eyes on right now. <laughs> we got we got the delivery fresh from the donut place coming in there, Dave. You gonna share that with us or not? No, absolutely not. Thanks. Not one of those is going to be shared with you because this is a very, very special update, guys. I mean, we have a lot of fun here, but it, this is um, the Toledo Bend Championship Sunday G-Man Breakfast Bassmaster Breakdown. If you're going to have the reigning and defending yes. Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year over for breakfast, you better bring out a spread, and that is exactly what I have done here you for you did. today, G-Man. You got snowballs, ding-dongs, Twinkies, Puff corn, I don't know. You got donuts. Yeah, this is this is what I can only had right before he went off on that Irish setter, the sugar shakes. <laughs> uh, th th this is this is how you fuel championship Sunday. I mean, and don't forget the giant Molo Poofy Pop. That's, I mean, it's always a breakfast that's favorite. That's what you eat right before championship Sunday on stage. That's how you carry that energy, ain't it? G -g 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 giant platter of donuts on Bass Live. It, 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 and it's spectacular. I mean, it, it's spectacular. And, $46 and are the finest. Sugar shakes ever. That's exactly what From that Toledo is. Tackle. If, if you wonder what this platter costs, forty-six dollars. Forty-six dollars of sugar right there. And uh, boy, what a championship Sunday we are having this this year at this event. You know, if you're if if you're our leader, Jamie Hartman, his mm -hmm. third elite series event, leading this, got six pound lead today. This win, does that fear you? Is it going to make it harder for those guys to catch him, or is it going to make it harder for him to hold them off? Well, one, one thing you got to take in consideration for the win is this Toledo Bend. And even though it fished tougher on some guys than it normally has, it's still Toledo Bend. And things could happen. And you've seen it yesterday when Murray make the big move, you know. Uh, the win could hurt Hartman. It could help somebody else. But they, he probably what's going through his mind is once he sees them fish weighed in like Murray had and, and Casey actually had, he starts thinking, and, you know, six pounds is not a big lead here like it should, you know, like it would be anywhere else. But, dude, don't get me wrong. He's earned it. That dude is catching him. He definitely is. And what we heard about him before the season started, excuse me, while I enjoy a little breakfast here. G get on in there, Jerem. Well, well, actually, let's use this food as a, as a training tool right here. How, how are that those? That has been on the shelf a little while. Uh, the, the, the fish for a lot of anglers were not eating like we're eating here. John Murray, though, you talked to him. You said you, you spent a little time with him in the mm -hmm. lineup. And, and his week, you know, coming in before yesterday, it looked like Murray was going to get kind of a top 50 finish, but it was a lot better than what we've seen on stage. Absolutely. John and I were right beside each other through the entire way in yesterday. And he told me, he said, he got up there and he's super excited. And I looked down and I'm like, dude, you got him. He goes, you think I got 21? I'm like, you got closer to 24. And I said, they're all pre-spawners, John. He goes, I know, dude, and I've been losing them. And I was like, what? He said, I lost a five, and then I panicked and tried to throw a six and broke my line. He said, I just can't get the big ones in. And I was thinking, you've been getting those bites every day? And he goes, absolutely. I just hadn't landed them. And I thought, this could be the guy that comes from behind and win. And John Murray, I mean, if you're new to the Elite Series, you know, you may not know who John Murray is, but John Murray, every angler in this field, I mean, has an immense amount of respect for John Murray because John Murray literally is a legend. I mean, he's won a boat, literally. This is a true stat, won a boat in every major West Coast tournament, like out there. I mean, over 30 boats he's won and... Uh, Truly an incredible angler, but it's been a while since we've seen him in the mix. Uh, I think the most outstanding, probably underrated fisherman out there, you know, he's struggled the last couple of years, but you know, you hear him talk about it. He has been eat up with uh, rheumatoid arthritis. 
and it's really slowed him down but he's a fish catching machine and on top of that what what i think is i put john murray and charlie hartley in the same deal about the, the greatest people you'd ever meet there's not a nicer more humble guy than John Murray for all he's won and to see him smile yesterday and he he said something really stood out to me he said I thought I had lost it to yesterday he said I really questioned myself could I land a big bass and to see a guy go through that mental state and be that positive on the other side I'm like yeah this is good stuff we got all great guys fishing for the win we talked about you yesterday on live and, and and the adjustments that you made because what we've seen early in this season you know this season We've talked a lot about rookies, and and we talked about how they're able to come here. You know, a guy like Jamie Hartman, he just fishes. I mean, he sold everything he yeah. owns, put it in a storage unit, fishes. Does not have that distraction of a, of a lot of the commitments that that some of the more senior pros, you know, some of the more established pros have. And you're a unique example of somebody who, you know, maybe struggled with some of that a couple of years ago. But you, what did you do to change your season around? You know, what an incredible change from one season to the other, from your worst ever Bassmaster Elite Series season yep. to one of your best. Uh, I think you 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 kind of start putting things in priority. Uh, you learn to say no a little bit when you can. Uh, you always keep fishing. Uh, you know, you got to realize you got to compete in a few weeks, so you have to work on that tournament before you get there. Uh, you, Leanne and I just said, let's stay more focused on the prize. You know, let's deliver everything we can for our sponsor, but let's do everything we can to make sure we're on the water and, and try to put your best foot forward to win. And I admire that about Hartman and those guys, dude, and some of the rookies that have all the time in the world to come. And I looked at Joe Lee yesterday when we was idling around out there, and I said, Joe Lee, I said, I'm going to have to find somebody to fish with when I'm home now. And he goes, yep. He said, my <laughs> fishing days are over. You know, and I think with great amount of success like Joe just had, you see that. You see the decline of the, him being able to be on the water. And it can affect you sometimes. It definitely can. Uh, and uh, definitely momentum, a real thing in this sport. And it's really tough to rebound from something tough happening. Brandon Polnick, for the second time in his career, made a culling error. You know, put a sixth fish in his boat. Yes, they <laughs> made a cast. And he, when he weighed in, he needed 19 pounds, two ounces. Really, he would have had 19.1 and been an ounce short of taking the lead. But he weighed in 17-1 yesterday because he was assessed a two-pound penalty. But no better way to get over that than start out firing 12 fish in his first hour. Absolutely. And it shows that even though some people would consider Brandon a rookie, I don't. He he, he was very mature by uh, rebounding from that. And, and props to him, dude. He, he was honest. He caught the mistake. He called it in. You know, he could have very easily tried to slide one back and nobody ever know it. But he knew uh, we policed the sport hard. And he knew ethically what he had to do. And he threw the fish back, and he went right on like a uh, champion should. And I'm really proud of him, man. And he's mature uh, way beyond his years to overcome that and keep catching them. He's had an incredible morning. He's sitting currently, unofficially, according to Bass Rack, in fourth place right now. Um, but he's not catching those quality fish that John Murray is catching. He's catching some smaller fish. But I got to believe that, you know, that quick start allows you to build on it. But Absolutely. I think a quick start is, is most definitely the key. And, and I'll look back on my first two tournaments this year, and I made a talk to Leanne and I a lot about sitting here getting ready for practice. I said, one thing I don't want to do in this tournament is start from behind. And when you get off to a good start, when you catch a few fish early, what it allows you to do is make decisions, calm down, and fish slower. Uh, I seem to struggle a little bit with that at Cherokee and at Okeechobee. I couldn't get bit early. And it kind of puts you in a mindset that you need to speed up, speed up, speed up. And sometimes by going fast doesn't make great things happen. By going slow makes big things happen. And I think what Paul Nick has now is he has some fish in live well. He kind of gets settled down. Everything starts to leave, and he starts to really get in a moment, which is deadly. However, when you watch what John Murray's catching, two more bites like he's been getting, and it's going to be hard to climb that mountain that he's done built. And all week we've talked about that. You know, it kind of felt like – Nobody had really put together a solid, as far as they were good and good weights, right. but you got guys who were catching them in so many different ways throughout the day. You know, even our leader, you know, he, he hadn't sight fished all week and caught a couple of sight fish. And John fish. was the only consistent pattern. And when he told me what he was doing, and I knew something was up because him and Skeet uh, texted me the night before the tournament. He goes, hey, do you have any slender pointer 127s, which is a giant jerk bait? And I'm like, uh, no. I said, I got a few at home, but I don't throw them. And Skeet goes, we need some bad. And I'm like, okay, something's going on. That's exactly what he's doing. He's cranking, he's throwing a giant jerk bait, which triggers those big bites. So even when the wind blows, if the water gets sandy and hazy, he still has the bait that draws him up. And he's triggering those six and seven pounds pre-spawn bites. Solid. Wow. Well, 12 How's, anglers out there. Yeah. 
Hartman we're watching right Don't now. Don't forget Casey. Casey Ashley. What's he got today? Uh, Casey Ashley hooked, Ashley hooked up hooked live up. right now. Casey, uh, you know. He's had a great success here. He's always been stout. You know, I, I, every time we come here, he seems to find that little magic spot, get offshore, get something to happen. I have no idea what he's doing this week, but I got a feeling he's fishing a small area and just kind of staying in the zone and fishing deep. Casey, very similar to a Brandon, you know, from the day he hit the tour, always showed a, a lot of maturity, very calm. Legit. It, very, really? he, nobody wondered, you know, when he won his first event, nobody wondered, is uh, this guy going to be around? Yeah, he won't be, no, when he won his first one, I'm like, yeah, he, you know, he, he's going to win more. And, and Kay, you know, Davey knew that. He come from Davey's end of the world, and I think Davey and him probably knew it better than anybody else when he come out here that he was the real deal. Uh, kind of like a Joe Lee, when, when he left Alabama, I think a lot of people knew that the Lee brothers was real. They knew Joe Lee was a true prodigy. I mean, I, the kid's incredible, and you just kind of have that, when it happens, you're not surprised. They're like, well, Joe Lee won the Classic, and I'm like. <laughs> no, nobody's surprised. I, I honestly, mean, I'm like, like he's got to probably win it again. <laughs> everybody was shocked probably to make such a giant charge. He that hasn't day finished out of the top ten in the points. It's incredible. Think about that. I mean. <laughs> and, and just when you think, Okay, it's a clear cut later, you know, of the young guys. You know, everybody always talks about a Lucas, a Polnick, a Jordan. You know, who is who is who is the clear cut, you know, guy out of that group? And just when we think, okay, it's decided, it has to be Jordan Lee, we come to this event and Matt. Jacob Wheeler, <laughs> you know, Jacob Wheeler, who yeah. in Wheeler his fourth blast event, him. Matt blast him, and you're like, see, I tell you, I think it's we've talked about this. We can't set it up. It is the toughest rookie class that I've ever seen. I think this is the stoutest elite field that we've ever seen. Last year I thought it was the stoutest I've ever seen, and this year it seems to go up. When you keep adding these guys in the mix, people ask sometimes, hey, man, what happened out there at the, at the Classic? Uh, I don't know. I'm fishing against 51 studs, you know. <laughs> you know, nobody seems to make great mistakes now, and I think that the field's getting stronger and stronger, which pushes everybody to bring their game up. John Murray is the one you got to watch. Including eating donuts. Oh, yeah, get, get on there. Eat, eat, eat that donut just like John Murray's fish are eating that big jerk fish. bait. I hopped that bait yesterday and that better one. Uh, okay, let, let, let's get another tool going here. Let, let's look at this beautiful. Now, uh, or you grab your own. I don't want yeah, you to touch something. Are, those have been on the shelf. Oh, okay. I'm going to put that one back that there. That tastes like now, diesel fuel. <laughs> show me why that jerk bait has been so effective. Well, <clears throat> Murray's got a big jerk bait and he's jerking and jerking and it's got a lot of flash and when the fish is looking up at it they're thinking I can't pass it up and when he pauses it it's like gone 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 well it's gone and John Murray uh, moments ago put in that big fish looks about about four pounder so and he's got uh, four now he's got five now but one of them's a small one I believe and uh if he gets one more kicker fish I mean look out I mean he's got a two pounder to call so you know, the class of fish he's catching, he can easily add, you know, three, two to three pounds if without he, even catching a super freak. Right. But if he catches one of those sevens, what would that put him at? What, what is, what, what's his weight right now with what he's got? John Murray right now, weight-wise, unofficially, where's he at right now? 69.14. So what does that mean he's got today? 20? That was before that fish. So, so you're gonna 73? 73 pounds, right around 73 pounds. And and the ability, 73 to 74 pounds, and the ability to add another whew. jump to set. I mean, if he catches a five and he gets that up to the 77 mark, you're going to have to get on the stage and do this for me. You're going to have to do something like John, J -J -J John's J -J 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 Giants, because <laughs> he has Mac daddied them. Incredible. And all week, you know, Kevin said it on stage. He said, uh, you know, me and him talked about it. Several guests talked about it and said it felt like. This tournament was going to be won by the person who finally put that pattern together, and it may have yep. been John Murray. Let's look at John Murray and that fish catch right now. We got nothing. Pan to the screen. No. <laughs> no. We got ding and dogs. <laughs> you can take those. Down. Thank gosh. Okay, I'm back to shaking. Had shakes three times already. 
and the day's not even done yet. So I'm pretty, that's a nice fifth fish. When you throw out there and catch a fish fish like that, you can't unhook it, you can't move, you can't think. You just smile and thank God that she stayed on. I'm gonna fall off this boat, so I'm gonna put it in live well, because this is my fifth fish. See that tail? Okay, three on that side, two little guys on this side. We're at five. We are at five. Woo! Uh. Man, doesn't get old. 35 years of doing it, doesn't get old. I'm gonna drift around. I know they're up on it. I wanna see them female for their, the, some of the other ones that are up, they're still spawning. They're still up there. I just got a couple pre-spawners this morning. There's still some up there eating a the big white bass, yellow bass, whatever they are. All right. Wow, John Murray, that fish, uh, incredible. But I, I got to correct something because uh, I thought he had one small fish. Right. He's got two fish. He's got a two fish. pounder and a pound and a half, or an eight and a six and a four. He what? Bas he basically caught our breakfast here. He's I mean caught 46 donuts in one fish. Now, that, here, here's the cool thing about this. We're sitting here listening to that. I can hear Murray's voice. I can hear, you know, he's breathing, he's excited, and you hear him say 35 years, and it doesn't get old. The guy's won 50-something bass boats, millions of dollars, and to see a guy like that get that fired up, it's about the bass. It's all about the fish, dude, and it, it, to see that's incredible. We talked a lot about the rookies this year, and obviously we are in this tournament because as of this morning, our, our rookie of the year leader was leading the tournament but let me ask you this do those rookies have somewhat of an advantage when they get success that quick because they don't really you know where john murray he knows how special this is he's been in the elite series right. since day number one i remember when the elite series first started he was a you know a top 12 making machine and you kind of thought john murray's gonna win a bunch of these he has not won an elite series event he knows how tough it is to be in this position right and, and john I, I'll give it this, and Davey and I talked about this uh, right after my second AOI title, is you don't know how much you miss something until it's gone. John Murray misses it, see, and, and Hartman knows that he's on a high wave and he's a stick. He's going to be around for a long time, but truly does he know how bad he's going to miss it if he's not on the top? Murray sees that. Murray, Murray can taste blood right now, and he knows I'm going to fight with everything I got to get that title. So I truly think there's something to that, the guy fighting from behind. And, dude, props off to both of them. I, I mean, whoever wins is going to be impressive, but Murray's just got a special place. It is going to be uh, an incredible uh, day here today, and we're going to have an incredible breakfast here with our reigning and defending Toyota Bassmaster Angler. Look, you want me to feed you this one right here? here. Oh. Hey, let me... uh, I missed it. I missed it. <laughs> all right, we got it all. We got, we got it. it all. Snowballs, ho hos, a mini. Move, snow, that was my pies. nickname in high school, ironically. Your complexion or your right arm. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be able to follow the action all day long on Bassmaster.com. Make sure to tune in for the yes. weigh-in. Get yourself a honey bun. If you eat enough of those, you don't need them bombed after you die. But look at this bad boy right now. This is the bass, and this is what John Murray is doing to them. Do not <laughs> miss the land on Captain Loom. He's throwing big bait and catching big fish, and he's got a lot of room to make up with those two smaller fish. And it's going to be a showdown, a throwdown, a and big a down. fish <laughs> mow down. Gerald Swindle, thank you, and we'll see you later. For Elite to Toledo Bend. Being brought to you live by PowerPole. I can't, I can't stop shaking. I'm almost. Come on, baby. That is a Toledo Band piglet. My gosh. Okay, I'm back to shaking. I have shaked three times already, and the day's not even done yet. So I'm pretty, 
That's a nice fifth fish. You know, Gerald was just talking about the passion and glad to see John Murray still got it. Well, I certainly knew he, he still had it. But John and, and Gerald and I all started fishing the Bassmaster Tournament Trail about the same time. Mm -hmm. and, and Gerald and I certainly agree that it's, it's the fish, it's the competition. Whether it's your first year, like we've talked about this rookie class being so, so good, or it's your 24th or 25th year. It is all about the fish, the competition, and it never gets old when you're in that moment. It's, I'm sure it's nice when fame and fortune come along, but I, I know you guys, You the, the thing is, you can't not do it. That's right. It, you just cannot get it out of your system. It's just, it's unbelievable. John Murray, looking like he just won the publishers, clearing out <laughs> sweepstakes there. Unbelievable excitement, shaking, breathing hard. Man, oh man, what we've seen from John Murray and, and everyone we've dropped in on today, but more than anything, our powerful replay of the day is gonna have to be this one right here from Murray. He's cracking a foundation, he said, off the end of this reef, is the way you describe it, point, reef, whatever you wanna call it. But out on the outer end, there's a foundation where uh, a barn, a house, something was there before the lake was, was backed up. And he's caught big fish here before. He said last year, this exact same place, he had his hands right beside the boat like this on three different six pounders and didn't land any of them. So he hooked up on this fish. He's caught big ones here before. It might not be a bat. Too big. Too big. Got this. Oh, it's good to have something Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and here he hooks up on another one just, just a few minutes after that. Oh, that's the same, same one there. there thank yeah. you. He was talking to himself, trying to, to it's fighting too much, it's, it's too big, it's a catfish. And the moment he saw his bath, he got silent. He never did, yeah. All he could hear was breathing at that point. Take a look at our, at our playing field this time, and a great one it is. Our hummingbird lay of the lake unlocks Toledo Bend Reservoir for us, the largest man-made body of water in the state of Texas. And as we've learned today, a state with many, many big bass factories, but as far as fame, we talk about fame and fortune and, and, and tournaments, high profile tournaments being here, nothing really compares. It, it, maybe a couple of places in the country in Toledo Bend. That's exactly right. And the reason we love it so much is it's so diverse, so many different things going on. Jamie Hartman is down almost close to the dam. It looks calm, okay for sight fishing today. And then not far north from there, just a little ways, is Brandon Pollock who put on a Shad Spawn's jig swimming clinic this morning <laughs> on Bass Live like we've never seen. And then here's where it's really been going down in the afternoon. John Murray and Casey Ashley fishing just a little, little north of takeoff. Catch him on a jig and a crankbait and John Murray just started fishing the jerkbait which is what he's been catching his big fish on. So we're still gonna see more from him hopefully. Jason Christie, if they don't count him out, he's the guy that's given Chase as best he can to John Murray. Of course, Murray just filled out his limit with a great one we saw there about 12, 15 minutes ago. But Christie's been the guy who's been able to stay with him as well as anyone could. And he's right where he wants to be, not only close enough in the leaderboard to win this thing, but he's way up north, no one around him, got his hood pulled over his head and just putting the hammer down on him. All you gotta do is think back to a destination we're going to later this year, Lake Dardanelle, and how he could sort of snatch that one away from Greg Hackney there. He is a, he's an assassin for sure. You betcha. Boy, it's great to see four different cameras rolling at once. <laughs> this is luxury, I'm telling you. Looks like John Murray has uh, attracted some fans here. This morning, I right. didn't see any anyone no, around him all alone early on. Like so there's some local local fishermen around Toledo Bend watching Bass Live. Yeah, you think somebody saw that on <laughs> Bassmaster Live and, and were impressed? Yeah, unbelievable. Jamie Hartman in a place that looks a little bit familiar, close to where 
We might have caught some of him fishing on uh, day number two of this tournament. I think you're right, Tommy. Throwing a Carolina rig. Even he said day two was really tough for him because it got so calm. Yeah. And he's got less wind on him there than some of these other guys, but a little bit of wind is what he was hoping for also. If you see him slapping bugs and gnats and stuff, you know that the, there's not enough wind. Right. John's leaning on his butt seats. You don't see a lot of leap guys do that unless you get in wind like this. The way the boat's just hopping up and down and up and down, you, you almost have Last to support cast. yourself against something. See, and we're going deep. The wet carpet, there's a few to. I gotta go hit, hit that, that spot, rub, man. A few have come over the front. Mm -hmm. And looking at John, it's, you want the wind, and I think the wind has, has been a key factor in why he's able to catch those fish out on that foundation with the crankbait, those pre-spawn fish. So you want that, but early morning when it's blowing just perfect, usually it builds during the day on Toledo Bend, and it's not far from being the wave so big that it'd be really, really tough for him to stay right in mm. that area and fish. When they start coming over that front, and it's only 10 o'clock in the morning. That's Ooh. not what you want. John Murray, not so long ago, we heard him mention this and Gerald backed it up, uh, dealing with the rheumatoid arthritis, you know, and things like that can, can hurt you, your stamina during the course of a day, and it's all important to putting together a winning effort, but boy, he has put together something special already today, over 20 pounds. And we don't get sick days on the Bassmaster Elite Tournament Trail. And in no. 23 years, I never got to call you. You never in took sick. a sick day? No. <laughs> because when you take a sick day, you got 109 other guys that aren't taking a sick day, no. and they will, they will take your money. There's a jerk bait John uh, has been catching, and he said losing several big fish a day on it. Yesterday he was able just to land a couple of them and he just started throwing this. We saw him catch one on it so far, but. Yeah, that was his limit fish. He caught on a good one too. Yep. And he still got uh, two small ones, Ronnie, in the, in, the, in the live well? John Murray, correct? Yeah, John yes. Murray. Yes, yeah, he has a two pounder and a pound and a quarter to go with his four, six, and eight. So plenty of potential too. Not good news for the rest of the field. Hartman's still a four fish. If he catches that six four like yesterday, he's right there with Murray. Started the day four pounds, four ounces ahead of him. Something interesting that I heard John say, he referenced him a couple times, a white bass or yellow bass, whatever you call them. Everybody that we've watched so far has been keen on the threadfin shad and the shad spawn and that sort of thing. John Murray is using baits to try to emulate the white bass or the yellow bass that are feeding on shad. Bigger baits, hence bigger bass. Well, He's the only person I've heard talk about that. Well, if you remember last year, That's we did Kevin we Hayes. did first look with Kevin, and he threw two different colored crankbaits. One was like that yellow perch or white bass. Uh, the barfish. Bar yeah. Bar yeah. Bar and then uh, and then another color. So that was just a, a way deeper crankbait than his 5XD, but same principle. Yep. I always like it when you're jerking, you feel a little tick in your line, and you shoots right there, and you twitch it one more time, and the fish eats it. Happened a couple times, a little dirty now, and I see them, but 
They just plow it the first time sometimes. If you're just tuning in, uh, we had some great stuff to show you. We will replay it later. We have seen many, many wonderful things this morning. You may be wondering where Mark Zona is. We are too. He's, he's got a tremendous road schedule this week. And I mean, when he tells us the sort of the, the things he's doing, the places he's going, I, I think you're going to be quite impressed. But our Triton on the line is the man himself, the Z-Man. Mark Zona, Z-Train, have you had a chance at all to watch any of these goings on this morning on Toledo Bend? Tom, Dave, I've wrapped up my coverage at this year's Masters. Uh -huh. And yes, I would like to say something I don't know if uh, what has happened with the cell coverage on Toledo Bend, but it's like it woke up this morning. <laughs> Unbelievable, and we're thankful. <laughs> I, I know you guys are, and hey, hey, I'm, I'm being dead serious on something. I've been, I'm, in all honesty, I'm watching Harrison Alexander this weekend. I'm kind of, you know, <laughs> Mr. Mom. Sure. No. <laughs> so, so blessed. No, no, but, no, 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 no. <laughs> Hey, I want to say something real quick, and, and Davey, you, you kind of hit on this, and I know, Tommy, you can, you can back this up. And, and, and we, I always say this, uh, the Bassmaster Live crew, and we are the most biased, unbiased commentators in the history of sports. <laughs> to see what John Murray is doing this morning, um, I heard Gerald Swindle say that, you know, you put him in the Charlie Hartley category as a human being, on the water and off the water, man. I, if this is no offense to um, Polinick and and Hartman and you know your man crush Tommy Sanders, Jason Christie. I, I, I know you've been excited all weekend long to see him in the top twelve. Absolutely, sure, you bet. <laughs> you you yeah. have to pull for John Murray, man. You have to. Yeah, it's it's really tough. Casey Ashley is a close friend of mine. Lives not far away and think the world of him and what he's accomplished but I got a quick John Murray story for you my first year on the Bassmasters tournament trail I drew him in the last event and I was one place out of making the classic and this guy's aggressive western good angler won a lot of stuff and he found out what I had online he said I'm gonna fish off your back deck all day he said I'm gonna fish you hard but you don't need to worry about me wanting half of the day on the front of the boat that's the John Murray I met 25 years ago, 24 years ago, and he's still that way, and he's like that to everyone. Yeah, I, no I, I, doubt about it. No doubt. It, you know, you his whole family, his wife Amy. I'm sure Amy's watching right now. But uh, yeah, man, what a what a morning! We've been able to catch some of those fish catches, and, and the other side, real quick. And, and Tommy, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop some. I'm gonna go sea pecking. I'm gonna go sea pecking. Please, okay? please do. I'm going to talk about that hair jig that we saw. We got to see uh, Jacob Wheeler early in the week, catching a few big ones, losing a giant. I got to see that. And I would like to talk to you about that hair jig. And the trivia is going to be, who said this to me? Was back in the day when Van Dam was railing him on that hair jig and Jacob Wheeler was catching him at Chickamauga when he won Bass Fest. A young angler walked up to me at the end of the weigh-in and said, hey, you don't need to be opening your mouth about that hair jig. Just worry about the crankbaits. Worry about the worms they're throwing. Keep that hair jig quiet. Tommy, let's go see Peckin. Do you know who that angler was? Now, it wasn't Jacob Wheeler, was it? No, it'd be the guy sitting next to you oh. right now, Jamie. <laughs> Well, he's, I heard, we heard a few little uh, comments like that as we heard it, but generally, I mean, Davey, you came around. You said that's generally a good thing to get that, that knowledge out there. It, it is, but Zona, that's why I have such a love-hate relationship with you. Because <laughs> you've known me too long, and you've got too many stories that you can and will reveal, I have found out. But, but you're exactly right. That's a good point. It's, it's kind of cool sitting on this side of the desk talking about the secrets. Yeah, that was my deal. Come on. <laughs> and, and, and there's no doubt when you sit on our side of the desk, we open up the floodgates. And as Takahiro said, we ruin everything. Ah, uh, yes. That's, that's the job description <laughs> the, right here. The, the best part of Davey wanting that secret to stay in the vault was the seriousness on his face when he said it to me. <laughs> We're trying to figure out, Z, if this is the best morning we've ever had on Bassmaster Live. Uh, 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 to, to help figure in the equation, you got to consider, did you see what Paulinick did this morning? 
I absolutely did. And you know what's been interesting, really what's been interesting about this event and the Classic is it's like around every corner there is such a huge shift in the tournament. Um, and, and I'm guys, I'm being dead serious. You know, as, as, as much as I'd love to be there right now, we're kind of, in all honesty, we're getting ready for for some Zona shows and Zona lives this week. Um, I, with what I've got going on up here, I've been glued to it for the simple fact that I, this one will. This is one of the. You know, we we do. We manufacture drama every now and then. This one's going to go down to the last minute today. You think so? Think it's going to down down to the last fish of the day? I really do. I, I, but here's what I'm going to say. It's going to go down to the last fish of the day, caught or lost. Yep. Good, got it. Good point. Absolutely. Got to get your take on Jamie Hartman. Everybody's got a take on. Him. Everybody's pretty much unanimous that he is. Uh, he's going to be a. He's going to be trouble for these guys for years to come. Hey, I will tell you, I, I, up in the Northeast, you know, I got some guys that run around up there on, you know, St. Lawrence River and Champlain. And when 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 Jamie came to the Elite Series back when we were covering him on Cherokee, I got a lot of texts, Tommy, when we were in studio, if you remember, from yep. some of the best Northeast, ha- I mean, hammers that said, this guy's for real, man. This dude is. And, and and he's here to put his time in. I remember what Hartman said to me. He goes, look, I'm going to live on the road and practice my, I mean, tap, tap, tap that can off of practice. <laughs> and that's what he's done. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's it just, a, just a marvel to everyone. And he may yet get it done by the time this day is over. We got John Murray sitting at 74 pounds and 9 ounces Couple of more upgrades, Z, and this thing maybe maybe shut down, huh? Well, I, I, that, you know, the beauty is he's got room to move. You know, he's got two two smaller fish in his live well. It looks like, and I, I know Davey made the comment that he has had his hands on some six pounders. Gosh, I mean, I I, I look forward to live this afternoon. I think you guys are going to have a uh, a T I M E if. You know what I mean, boy. Oh, boy. I do. Absolutely. Tommy, Z, thank- can you tell I've had some coffee this morning? I can tell you've had a little coffee because I know you've been busy. I mean, I, we, we know about the whole suspension from the karate stuff, and I thought maybe you'd have a little more time, but obviously so busy s- spending some time out there with the, uh, yeah. at, at Amen Corner and plus the babysitting, young Harrison Alexander. Don't drink I've so got much coffee. i babysit today. I, I hope to be back on the water tomorrow. Um, Karen's out of town this weekend. She's got a big creative memories class she's in. She does the, you know, <laughs> oh, no, the, scrap, no, no. the scrapbook and Stop. BS. Or she makes leather purses. I don't know. Zona Live coming up next week. Stay on Bassmaster.com to, to get all the details on that. Mark Zona all over the world apparently this weekend, but having the time to uh, check in with us about the big doings, as I love to say, going on at Toledo Bend. Say hello to Harrison for me. Hey, guys, seriously, great job this weekend. I know it's been a challenge, but, boy, the coverage today has been fantastic. Well done. Today has been a joy. Joy talking to you, Z. It's been a joyous morning. Don't forget, Casey Ashley has really gotten it done. One o'clock is his... uh, one thirty. I thought catching was catching those that, big ones. Yesterday, <laughs> I think it was one nineteen. But he mm-hmm. just mentioned after one o'clock that the second day when he had a twenty three pound bag, he, he caught those fish, found those fish at, at one o'clock. So this afternoon's going to be equally as interesting, especially if we get to watch these two guys because John Murray also said that he had been catching or getting his hands on some and landing a few of them. Really, really big fish in the afternoon. And it's so much fun. we got two guys basically maybe even fishing the same reef, not too far from each other, exact same look, and they're doing something a little bit different, which makes it even more interesting for us. Yep, sure does, sure does. And let's not forget about Jason Christie. Oh, He's man. He's right where he wants to be. Boy, you, you forget about him at your peril. And way up north where got nobody's a, around. Got a very interesting note on Jason Christie, his first day of practice. He's just idling, doesn't have a – Steve Wright just wrote it. Go to the blog during our break and explain the spot, what happened to Christie and, and how he came upon finding that 9-pound, 10-ounce uh, Phoenix Boats big bass that he's got here. He was idling, and a 2.5-pounder just jumped into his lap. You got to go see the blog to read the rest of what wow. what went on there. That's in today's blog. 
Yes, it just came in okay. 10 minutes ago. It should be up any second. Yeah, it's kind of going your way when they just jump in your lap. Yeah, we've had them jump out of the boat here. <laughs> we've, yeah. we've, if it, they're jumping in your lap, watch out for them. John's saying a little something. If we could. Said it scared uh, the heck out of them. Let it rest up. It's usually about 1231. This spot turned on again the first day, you know, so I'm just going to beat it up as hard as I can now with different baits, throw a Carolina rig. I have not caught a fish on a Carolina rig all week, but that's how you usually catch 10 pounders, so I'm going to throw it. This is one of those deals that most, you know, most of my big bites have come right from a little stretch over here. You don't want to get crazy and go running around when, when all you need is, you know, one or two more big bites. So I'm going to milk it. Picture Jordan Lee at the Classic, huh? Sit on one spot. Ooh, that hurt. Casting into a 20 or 25 oh, mile an hour wind, headwind is it's not the easiest thing in the world, no, even no, no. even for elites. When you get back back, you're supposed to pick up on in Toledo Bend and have a 10 pounder on there. But it's supposed to work. I almost just set the hook just to say it did. Starting to see this top five kind of break away right now early in the morning on this final day. The the mini board right there, the leaderboard, Casey Ashley, it's another six pounds until you get to sixth place. So those top five are kind of making their early morning push to, to create a gap. I hope I didn't jinx Brandon Paul when I told my story of Toledo Ben last year. Was catching them just as fast on a different bait, but sure. exact same setup, and just was having a blast. And then weighed in 11 pounds, and wasn't so fun. Yeah, <laughs> when I realized everybody else was catching 20 pounds, your your allotted time of fun had uh, had yeah, been already doled out to you there. You take for granted those days of catching them like you did this morning when you have Jacob Wheeler weighing in four fish on day two and some of these guys in the top 12, you know, going to take all day to fill their limits for sure. Yeah, I've, I've talked about it this week. I'm not going to say that catching, putting five no matter what size they are, as long as their keepers in the live well, helps you mentally. You just need to... And I learned from experience because I, I got caught up in two pounders. Thought I was having a great day. Yeah, guys, I caught 50 to, in case he's hooked up. That would be number five. Nowhere to go but up now. Find the folks at home, the viewers, that uh, during the break they can go look at uh, Brandon Palnick's flurry and photo gallery and, and uh, close pictures on the boat with the marshals some of the other guys catching their fish. Yeah, you need to fix these folks up with some content, Such, because it's going to be having withdrawals. It's there. When we take our break at, at one, at, uh, for an hour and a half here in just a few minutes. Probably I mean, that one I missed on the jig earlier. It's going to be an adrenaline spot. deficit. We heard Brandon Polinick talking to Garrick Dixon when he was going through that flurry of fishing. So Garrick has a fantastic photo gallery of the fun, action, wow. even the misses when he, when he set the hook too early. So. It's like Casey's throwing a Texas rig worm, a big 10-inch, 11-inch okay. worm. I didn't see him do that any yesterday. Mm -hmm. but we come in in the evenings after having a, whether you had a good day or a bad day, and you spend hours trying to think of other baits, different things Too to do. Fine. And John Murray 
did something different this morning and it certainly paid off. And it's got to be reassuring to, to him to be able to catch him again, though, on the big jerk bait, too. So yep. he's, he's got to be feeling good about things right now. Murray started day one 13th, fell to 34th on day two. There's no, no wind. And then back to third after day three. Interesting. A lot of stuff in that. A couple of dimensions you need to think about. John Murray, what an impressive thing he has done today. And, you, you know, you say, oh, we got to pull for John Murray. And, boy, a lot of people certainly are, Z, for one of them. But uh, don't, don't get complacent. Don't think he's got uh, this thing put away yet. As we look at the fish lineup for these two guys right there, Hartman is six pounds behind, but he's basically got another fish to go, which could just completely tie things up any moment. We are far from done here. We love the good, tight competition. We love to see these guys doing well on Toledo Bend. Let's take a look at where we are right now, unofficially. Bass Track has John Murray there. Christy in between Murray and Hartman. Polinick, and as you say, uh, uh, Ronnie, the top five have uh, pulled about a four pound margin themselves ahead of the rest of the field. And we'll add Casey Ashley in just a moment, his fifth fish, which just happened moments ago. One. Boom, shakalaka. Final weigh in coming up today bass. from Cypress Bend Park. You That's heard uh, kind of Dave talking about the size of crowd they're expecting in there today. They come and see stuff Bend. like that. That's what Toledo Bend is all about. Right in the middle of bass fishing culture USA. Down here in East Texas, Northwest Louisiana. They got a Big tree, giving the people what they want to see. That's what the weigh-ins are about here at Toledo Bend. Get them what they like to eat, too. All those big fish we're seeing at the weigh-ins, none of them have the bellies. None of them are piglets like what we're seeing John Murray catch this morning. Today, definitely pre spawn fish. Today has been definitely something special, something extra. All the more reason to not forget about us. Coming back in just a short hour and a half, 12.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Eastern time, we will have our final three-hour stretch of Bassmaster Live and get you very, very close to weigh-in time on Toledo Bend. A lot of excitement is what we are expecting. We'll see you in just a little bit.